Hello team, welcome to the 50th episode, the big 5-0 of the Quick Resume podcast. Uh, if you haven't been before, my, uh, been here before, my name's Deck and that's Tim over there. Hello. Hi, um, and we make up the QRP. Uh, I've got a number of stuff to go over today. Um, new Halo maps, possible Halo BR, quote unquote, um, New Vegas 2 stuff happening naming conventions who knows yeah hopefully you stick around and find out more uh, but there's lots of fun stuff to go over i'll have to apologize in advance because if you've watched the show before this is not usually where i am if you're a video watcher and if you're an audio listener you might hear my voice bouncing around a room a few times i've had to um uh pull a few strings to to actually be able to film this week with it being easter holiday and, and everything uh, but here we are we've managed to pull it off so um if you're listening thanks <laughs> and i'm sorry about any changing quality um but let's let's start with sort of a bit of a check-in then tim what's going on what have you been playing what's been going on uh yeah no uh first of all happy easter yeah it's, a, it's easter sunday isn't it we record this mm. on, on, on a sunday so it's officially yeah. easter sunday i guess this is just the day this is the easter day right you don't say like happy easter on like good friday or like or like the the Monday. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Just... You, yeah, you right. You don't. It's, it'd be weird to be like, "Happy Good Friday." Have a good Good Friday. Yeah, it'd be weird, isn't it? Have a good Good Friday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess this is this is the day you say that. So happy Easter, man. You, you had any eggs? You had any chockies? No. no, no. I've been You've running been around boy. doing stuff. No, well, I, I mean, I haven't. I just haven't had any eggs. <laughs> I mean, I, I I had an egg like three weeks ago when like they first went on the shelves because I just fancied. Some... I think I, I think I'm I think I mentioned it to you, but for some reason Easter eggs just hit me like on a cellular level, like a molecular level. Oh yeah, you really like them, don't you? Yeah, you, I you, really you like it. I think you, you feel the chocolate's better when I actually thought the... it was the opposite. I feel like yeah, the chocolate's I, 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 I don't know. I think Easter eggs is like the pinnacle like pinnacle of chocolate i don't know why i just like something about it yeah i don't know i'm kind of not the same like i feel like if i were to get like a dairy milk egg crack that open and just take a big old shard of that and eat it and then if i were to just take a bite <laughs> out of a dairy milk bar i would prefer the dairy milk bar over the, the egg i just feel like it's, and i totally i, feel like they use I understand cheaper that i i just can't say i I agree. I don't know if it's because it's like like this curvy egg, you know, like you put, pop it into your mouth and it's like quite thin yeah. and delicious. Do you have it because you know, like, too? do you like crack it open and like eat it from the cold from the fridge? Do you know what? No, mm. <laughs> I don't. Damn, I yeah. I have. I don't know, but I think I'd be interested to hear how many people actually do refrigerate chocolate because I I think it's quite controversial. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely. Yeah, I mean, pe- people who like having warm chocolate is just kind of weird. Like, there are some people who, like keep it in their pocket or like sit on it for a little bit until it gets a little bit melted. Sit on it? it. Yeah, <laughs> I've met people just that have done that. Sit yeah. there fighting uh, on their chocolate bars. Yeah, uh, uh, but like, yeah, if it's for me, if it's room temperature or cold, I'm definitely a cold boy. Like, I I would have it nice and fresh, fresh and cold out of the fridge. I. I always remember used to thinking it was really weird that you did that when we were younger, but I, I've gotten into it a little bit in my old age. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I don't do it with everything. Um, yeah, I guess I just don't have space in my fridge, mostly for Easter eggs. That's that's the biggest problem. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, aside from the chocolate and Easter talk, um, yeah, what what have I been playing this week? What have I been playing this week? Um, I've the the normals, I think. Uh basically just like Elden Ring. Um, that sort of thing. I made some progress on that. I really need to sink my teeth more into that game. I'm being pulled away with like little bits of other things. Um and to be honest, I haven't really been gaming as hard as as, as I'd like to, sort of after work these days. Um but yeah, so I'm still dipping my toes in that and getting through it. Um, as soon as you, uh, it was last episode, we mentioned that uh, Radan fight and the summons, right? Uh, yeah, it and was, I yeah. missed. I, I missed all the summons. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I went yeah. on. And I beat him first time. <laughs> I, I literally just kicked his ass. It was like one of the easiest boss fights I've ever done. I didn't have to do anything. Um, yeah. yeah, I, I never struggled with him too much. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can imagine he was really easy with magic, just riding around on a horse, flinging stuff at him. I imagine he was so easy. 
Uh, on first playthrough, yeah, first playthrough, I think it took me two or three times, uh, just because like he has a lot of quite hard hitting things, so he does tend to one shot you if your health is small. I guess so. But, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it, like, yeah. It, it wasn't my favorite boss fight. It was cool, like the whole like like scenery of it and like the, just like the moves he does are like epic, like the scale. Well, what happens crazy. at the end? Like yeah, the and what happens move. at the end? Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, that that was absolutely bonkers. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I kind of didn't really know what was happening. I was like, he's gone, and then things were happening, and I was just riding around on a horse, and a massive explosion happened. Uh, oh, did you not see him? He like I, he I vanishes. Did see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like he's like through the sky. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. It is super super cool. Um, and then yeah, like a meteor strikes at the end of the boss fight too. Um, and uh, I've investigated yeah. that that landing site of, of that. That's where I am right now. Actually, I'm in there, um, mm. which is cool because it loops into an area I've already been in. It's like above it, which is super cool. Um, and I wasn't. Yeah, it opens that. up, opens up a slightly different um, area. Yeah, and then I I fought the double gargoyle boss uh, once or twice, uh, which was really tough uh, in that. Oh area. yeah, yeah, that is pretty the two hard. Big gargoyles, yeah. So I gave that a couple of goes, and then I haven't been on since. Um, Mm. But yeah, so Elden Ring, uh, Apex Legends, um, been getting back into that with the new event and the the heirloom and stuff like that. Um, and then what else was there? I think there's a new new event for that this week. There is, or yeah. There's like another another collection unshackled? of skins. Yeah, yeah, unshackled. Yeah, they they're, they're bringing back that um that game mode where you know it, there's no healing, but there's like zones that you can heal in. If that if that makes sense, do you remember right. that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah um, I think so, yeah. Yeah, which was really cool. That was like a fan favourite one. Um, I think a lot of people are hoping that would become a permanent game mode, uh, like the control mm. and stuff like that. So that could be a little bit of fun. Uh, some cool new skins in there. Um, and it yeah, really has to add that, new game modes in that. I don't know why. What, in Apex? Uh, they, yeah. They add new game modes. I know modes. they add it they don't just do it. I don't know. They just don't do it on like a permanent basis, right? Um, they did yeah, add game modes though, like, but yeah, it is a bit weird. It's um, but the the ones they do are good. Like control is good. Like the community really likes that that domination style respawn game mode. It's, it's it, it it went down really well. Uh, people love that healing one that's coming back. Um, I think there was another one people really liked as well. I can't remember what it was. There was one where, like, as the ring closed, you you got to respawn again or something. I can't remember what it was. Maybe no, it was something no. like that. As it closed, you you got like another respawn. I don't know. But yeah, they they tend to be quite good. Um, but yeah, obviously their main focus is BR, right? So they're going to mm. try and not draw attention away from that. Even Arena, that's good. It's got like dedicated maps and modes and all that sort of stuff. It's it's still falling really short to their expectations. I think, um, I think hardly anyone plays arenas. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite yeah. tough to do. Um, but yeah. And then, uh, and I watched Morbius this weekend too, outside of gaming. So was, your brain uh, has left your skull. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. It, was it was pretty bad. <laughs> um, it wasn't awful. It wasn't trash, but it was not great. It was. I, I I actually felt like the CGI even just looked kind of bad. Like you know, have you seen like the X Men movies? Um, do you remember like Nightcrawler in the old X Men movies where you like teleport and there's yeah. like puffs of smoke and stuff like that? It was like yeah. that. That was the CGI they used. And it's like that movie's really old. Like they did Nightcrawler a long time ago, and I felt like it was like a really similar style of CGI, really overused. Um, and it just looked weird. Everything was all drippy and smoky, and uh, it was it was quite funny actually. Some Everything scenes was drippy and quite smoky. funny. <laughs> yeah, like the effects when they were like moving and like teleporting. You know, like to create the illusion they were going fast. They just like made their clothes like turn to liquid and smoke and stuff like that. And it just right. I don't know. It just looked kind of weird, um, right to me. Okay, uh, and a bit overused. Um, and uh, yeah, and it just lacked like a good villain and stuff like that. So not not great, but not the worst. You know, I'd put it on par with some of Marvel's worst. You know, like Thor, like Dark World, 
and stuff yeah. like that you know the really not fantastic ones um so yeah anyone listening i probably yeah. wouldn't go i probably wouldn't pay to watch it i'd probably wait until it it looks it looks dreadful yeah, yeah i kind of had a feeling it, it was going to be pretty bad um but you know it's a sony made one and these things do tend to happen you know it's sony like in collaboration wow. with marvel with the fact that they <laughs> well no they, they do it's like it's like the amazing spider-man movies they weren't fantastic and venom they were they, and venom they're all sony produced they can't do it but then whenever you know sony were like okay marvel you direct you know the new spider-mans they nailed it with like all, 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 all the new ones with tom holland and stuff like that but it's like whenever sony just go off on their own and make their own movies they just they just don't do as well like nearly mm-hmm. as well so yeah no that's, i mean I, I don't think you're wrong but i do think you are a bit of a fanboy you're an expert so you know what can i say come on man don't out me like that it's, it's, not what I'm trying it's to pretty say hard having it. any an like extremist on the podcast me. stop <laughs> gaslighting me jeez um, um yeah cool that yeah. sounds good um i won't be watching morbius <laughs> no yeah uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't moon knight's doing reasonably well though from what i hear so maybe one day yeah yeah i also watched that to be fair i watched all three episodes of that this weekend uh which was pretty good okay again i won't go into too much detail i don't want to just it's a gaming podcast but um yeah moon knight yeah. is pretty good um i i have enjoyed the first the first few few episodes did I send you the link for uh, the ha- where I'm watching Halo? You did, yeah. I haven't I actually did. clicked on it and watched it yet. I I, I need to, but I just have so much watching. Yeah, there's, there's, there's right now only four episodes so far, so I mean, you could just wait till the okay. end and then watch it all afterwards. But yeah, that's that's still going. That's fine. Okay. Um, have you been keeping up with it as well? <laughs> I've been, yeah. I think it comes out like every Wednesday or Thursday or something. Yeah, yeah. I've been watching all of them. Um, Okay. Yeah, but my, my opinion hasn't changed since when I've talk, spoken about it on previous episodes. It's like, it's like fine. It's like there's yeah. some moments you're like, that was pretty good, and there's some other moments you're like, that was bad. <laughs> then there's other moments. <laughs> then there's other moments that will like, it will just depend on like how tied you are to the games versus the TV show. Like like I said, when I've watched impressions and stuff of this, everybody like t- has a different take on every part of the show. Um, it's just crazy. Like even in one episode, people are like, "Oh, I love that bit," and other people are like, "What? That bit was terrible." And I'm the same. Like I don't agree with like other people are like, "Oh, that part was good." And I'm like, "No, it wasn't." <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it's crazy. But um, some parts and like Cortana wasn't anywhere nearly as bad as it looked like it was going to be. Still looks a bit off because you know, in some of the early screenshots we got, she was like not translucent. Yeah. Um, and it's Jen Taylor, so it's the same Cortana from the games. Um, they've like it looks a little bit better, but it still looks like a bit off. Like there's some CGI going. I don't know. Mm. The only thing I can say that is generally good is that generally the actors are doing a pretty good job, and Pablo Schreiber is actually a pretty good chief. He's not game chief, but he's generally doing a pretty good job as chief. I think he's like, All right, I think uh, yeah. So chat to. I hope it just goes somewhere. That's the problem because there's only nine episodes, and there's like lots of things that I'm like, this will be worth it if. Uh, it pays off, but yeah. there's been like a load of talk about um, hit, like Chief not having his, I have, has, he has his helmet off a lot um, okay. and very rarely puts it on. And so there's a lot of talk about like that. Um, and then also last episode, Chief was naked and we saw his ass. So everybody's calling him oh. Master Cheeks. <laughs> Master Cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's how it Master Cheeks. <laughs> Master Chiefs, I love yeah. That. So that's happening. But yeah, whatever. I'd, I'd still recommend it. Like I said, it, it, it's, it's still quite cool to see it come to life. And there's like some interesting, like new things in the show that haven't been really touched in the games. Um, but there are some things in there that will trigger you if you like, if you like know the games reasonably well. Like just simply yeah. because, like it's just different. You, you acclimatize to it. And it depends how stubborn you are with doing that. But like you, you do acclimatize to it. I feel some people won't, and they'll just hate, hate watch it. Like, oh, I hate this. I'm gonna hate yeah, this for yeah. nine, nine episodes. Uh, yeah. Depends how stubborn you are. I mean, we all know Halo fans are the most stubborn people on the planet. So yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Um, but other than that, uh, I have I've hundred percent in Elden Ring now. I did it. I've achieved oh. the Holy Grail. <laughs> Uh, oh I am the Elden nice Lord. <laughs> um, that's it. It's fine. It definitely, I think, it loses a lot of its magic when you start gutting towards things in that game. 
Um, it, like, it like really made me appreciate my first playthrough when it was just like you didn't know anything on the map and you were just wandering around finding shit. Um, yeah. Because, and I'm sure there's still things I haven't seen. Like, I can't think there's many because I've done like every major boss fight, like the secret ones and like all the legendary spells, talismans, etc., etc. But I'm sure I'm sure there are still things here and there that I haven't gotten. But it really does take the magic out of it when you're just darting from thing to thing. Um, yeah, definitely. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's cool. And I think maybe while we're on the topic, actually, this is maybe a good time to just bring up just a funny thing that's happened in the community. It would be has it's not really a news beat, but it's just something that's been kind of like quite viral. And it's been the have you heard about this? The let me solo her Elden Ring guy. Do you know what I'm talking I, about? Oh, yeah. No, I haven't actually seen... I've caught wind of this, but I haven't watched anything on it. What, what, what's it, it about? So there's a boss near the end of Elden Ring. It's not. It's, it's an optional boss, um, which I did my first playthrough and haven't touched since. Mega hard. Probably one of the hardest bosses from stuff that's ever made. So hard. It took me like 30 goes. Um, and there started becoming a pattern of posts on Reddit of people saying that there was somebody with their sign down outside of this boss um, called Let Me Solo Her. That was the name of the character. <laughs> yeah. And they brought them in and they just had two katanas, was naked and just had a pot on their head. Okay. And they would go in, they'd both go in and, and the host would just stand back and he'd just go in and like kill them without taking a hit. Wow, like, this this like incredibly hard boss, and it's happened yeah. a few times, and it's become like mythologized now. Like, and people are like doing <sighs> fan art of like a, a naked pot headed guy with two katanas fighting this boss, <laughs> oh and it's God. like it's like uh, become a whole thing. Um, the let me solo her guy, and like somebody re- I remember some, like some website found who it was and like reached out to interview them, and they were like, "All I can say is that I'm sorry, I'm sorry to the few people who I've taken a hit." for like like who i like i took a couple of hits uh with some yeah. people and probably scared them and i'm sorry to those people it's like who are you dude some, some sort of immortal yeah um, this, this man is just i guess not all heroes have to wear capes right some wear potheads and it's incredible katanas. this man's dedicated yeah. his life to just mastering this boss and then helping out the community <laughs> with it just with a pothead so as well yeah. yeah that's great man Great. Yeah, I was reading. I was I was watching that story evolve, and it was just so funny watching it turn from like like a random thing to it being like a seat, like a pattern. Like people were noticing it was the same person to it being like becoming fan art to becoming like animated shorts. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, um, yeah, that is hilarious. Just, that is free advertising for FromSoft, but yeah, that is funny. Um, cool. Well, I mean, shall we get into the honorable mentions if you're all right to do so? Mm-hmm. All right, let's do it. You caught me with your but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's start. So, um, the best game of all time is coming to Xbox and Xbox Games Passed on uh, finally. Bug snacks, baby. Big old I'm bug so, <coughs> I'm so hyped for this game. It's unreal. Yeah. I've yeah. wanted bug snacks since since the day I saw that thing eat his own strawberry hands. <laughs> It's the day I knew I needed bug snacks. <laughs> yeah, very s- nice and specific there. We really know what we're talking about. <laughs> Every time oh, we yeah. saw that thing eat those strawberry hands. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, don't even, like, there's more reason to get excited because it comes with the first content update, the Isle of Big Snacks. <laughs> oh, my God. Big Snacks. Big Snacks. Big, big snacks, snacks. Bug Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> big old bug snacks. <laughs> big bug snacks. Yeah, so that's happening. Um, which apparently is actually a pretty good game, so it um, seems like a perfect game pass game to me. Um, yeah. So um, I will... I'm, I'll maybe give it a go. Uh, as weird as that game looks, uh, apparently it's actually pretty good. So, solo I don't even only? know what type of game it is, to be honest. Yeah, I was uh, about to say, is it solo only, or can you like co-op it, or multiplayer? I think it's just so. Like, I think I think it is like a single player game. I don't really know what it is, to be honest with you. It's, it's a bit of an enigma. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, yeah, I know me too. Absolutely, without a doubt. Um, next up is um, uh, Back for Blood update. 
Um, and the reason I mention it is because, well, it's the honorable mentions list, but it's get back for Blood is still on Games Pass um, at the moment. Um, and the first update um, includes a new segment of the map. It's, I think, what's it called? Tunnels of Terror or something? Yes, I um, think that's exactly what it's called. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I sorry, I don't know if that's like a, a sequence of missions in there, or if it's like a different game mode entirely. But I know there's like different zombie variants. There's two new cleaners. There's some new weapons, um, some new cards. Um, and I, I hopped back into it to have a look the other day, and uh, they, they've done quite a lot of work on like the card system. So there's like, you know how there was like three trees before when we used to play, and you like progressing. Yeah. There's four now. And there's also like a timed fifth one. Um, and like, there seems to be quite a few because they rotate in and out like daily. So like you can make as much progress as you can to that one, you know, maybe not that day, maybe it's weekly. I can't remember. So, and supposedly like a lot of the good stuff is in there or in those ones, those rotating ones. Um, okay. It's like the black market, but it's called something like that. Um, yeah. There, there, was, there was quite a few new things like that. I can't remember if some of the other ones right at the top of my head. Um, but yeah, I mean, Back for Blood is good. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good game. Yeah, uh, I think it's um, a shame that this is a pay expansion. Though it's like a, it's not much. It's like a tenner, but um, I think they're kind of gimping themselves a little bit. I, I mean, I understand, you know, because they're not doing mark transactions, so they have to monetize somehow. Um, but I guess yeah. that's just how it goes. You know, when you're choosing your monetization model, you know, free to play versus um, the, like expansion or whatever. So, because when this comes out of Games Pass, I, like right now I'm eyeing it up, but I wouldn't be looking its way if I had to then buy the game and the expansion yeah. pass, you know. Maybe in like six months time when it's on its like third expansion and it's on a discount or something, and you know, Game of the Year edition, whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Any interest in Back for Blood? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed my time with it when we did play it. Um I would not be opposed to going back, to be really honest, especially if they've revamped the card system and stuff like that, like you said. Because um, I think that was our kind of one gripe with it. Like, I think the cards were really cool and that whole system was cool, but the way you obtain them was a bit uh, boring. And exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it wasn't very exciting. And like, if it's like a like a cool like black market like rotation like tree you can go down that's timed, that, that makes it a bit more exciting, to be honest. Um, and hopefully there's some pretty spicy things in there. And then a whole new fourth tree and, you know, two new characters as well to build around and cards based around them too. Um, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely go back. But, you know, I guess, like you said, it's just the it's just the Games Pass model, really. If it stays in Games Pass, they're going to have paid DLCs for the upsell, right? Um, and I guess, I guess it might leave Games Pass at some point, but... I, I can imagine it's going to be on there for a little while. Um, if not, potentially, yeah. definitely. I, I don't really know. Yeah, well, it came out January, didn't it? So sometimes, like, some of the longer oh, deals, they tend really to be actually... there for... Wait, no, the game yeah. came out in January, is what you're saying? Yeah. yeah oh, I, I thought you said it came out of Games Pass. <laughs> okay, so... Oh, uh, no, no, no. Like, for a yeah. little bit. Okay, yeah. So some some of the longer ones staying there for like six months. So yeah, we can expect it maybe a bit longer unless they um like say they keep renewing it. Maybe it's just one of those ones that it works out well for the both of them. But um some games leave and then come back. So you know we'll have to see. Um I'm not opposed to going back to Back for Blood, uh, whether it's sooner or later. Um the bones were pretty good, I would say, for the most part. Um yeah. But it's just other stuff around it that need, needed to be added. Um so that's Back for Blood. Um the I'm not going to stay on this too long because we do have a big Halo segment. Um, but um, there was a Halo, the Halo Encyclopedia came out this week, which a lot of nerds are very excited about. And that's like I'm not throwing shade. It's like a really cool book. It's just that <laughs> like it's a very like specific thing to own. Uh, it's like you know mm. 500 pages of like this concept art. You know, I've seen a lot of content creators like post about it on Twitter and everything. Um, and like this concept art and like you know, the, like it's like um. So, uh, how do you, you pronounce it? The Similar, Sim, Similarian? Similarian? If the Tolkien's like Sim, Similarian. Yeah, you know, Tolkien's like Similarian, and it's like the encyclopedia of like the Lord of the Rings universe. Um, oh, like, okay. It's like, it's like more of like a dictionary uh, rather than like a story, you know, but it, it like tells you about different parts of the world. And 
Um, so it's kind of like that, the Halo universe. And there's like loads of stuff in there. And like some of the concept art, like some of the species that they have in there, that they haven't even touched, like look amazing. Like it's, it's, it's more like, um, yeah, like it starts going towards like more like Destiny and like, um, Grimoire. you know, because I, I think like Halo, for better or worse, has this kind of quite c- contained like sci-fi like scope do you know what i mean it's like it's the covenant yeah. and it's this collection of collection of species which um you know are like has to like believe in like a religious like superpower or whatever um and it's like you know the grunts and the elites and the blah, blah, blah. but we haven't really seen anything outside of that like maybe the prophets which are the weird boys you know that are like the big necks um yeah yeah uh, <laughs> So it was just cool seeing that there is stuff in that expanded universe. And, you know, I'm sure people who are more follow this more closely than I do, like, have known this for decades. And I'm sure there's been stuff in, like, the Kirk comics and the books and the ex- expanded universe or whatever. But it was just quite cool for me seeing it as some stuff which has come to life. Um, uh, and there's been a lot of stuff like that that's been, like, sparking off in my head recently. Maybe it's part of the show. But you know how also we spoke about the season two trailer last week? And it was, like, about the Headhunters. Um and I had like a quick look on the Wikipedia to see what I said. And I was like, man, a spin-off like Halo game about headhunters. Because there's not that much on them. Like they're known about, but they're like covert ops. Like, you know, like specialist um, Spartans um, that, that yeah. specialize in different bits and bobs. And I was like, man, a spin-off game. I tweeted about this. So a spin-off game on, on like a, that, a group of Spartans like that would be so cool. Um, yeah. And it's not like they haven't done it before, right? They did the same with like ODSTs. So like, yeah, there's no reason why they can't do a similar um premise with the headhunters and stuff like that yeah yeah they sounded really really cool um yeah when you were talking to me about them as well i'd absolutely love to see a game like that yeah awesome. totally and they're they're like yeah I'd, I'd recommend anybody to have just a quick look on the wikipedia because there isn't that much about them but there's just enough that it makes you think oh this is quite cool like there's no like from what i can tell fleshed out stories about headhunters other than that they exist and that they have a purpose and they're very secretive um, and you know they do confidential missions, so that is, you know not much is known about them. Um, but to me, that just is like leaves a big gap in the fiction. That's like, oh, we could make something very cool with these characters. Nonetheless, I digress. Also, um, go on. Oh, I was going to say, do you know, it would also go really well into like a completely hypothetical Headhunters spinoff game, the Nemesis go. system that we've been talking about, mm. and like a shadow, a shadow of war mm. sort of feel to it. I think that could. I think that could be so cool as you just like hunt your targets mm. and they get like, yeah, you know, obviously like progressively like, more dangerous and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, like brutes come back with like bigger helmets because you've headshot them too many times, and then they come back with like bigger chest yeah. plates because you shoot them in the body the next time. Yeah, yeah, that that I think that would go really well into into a game like that for sure. Yeah, hit us up three four three. We got some we got some ideas in the oven. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I love it. I love that idea. Um, and, and I guess that is kind of... And I think a lot of people have been talking about like wanting to see more from the expanded universe in Halo for like a long time, but it's a difficult tightrope because they tried to do that with 4 and 5 a little bit and a lot of people didn't like that because it was too... I mean, maybe maybe we could blame the bad writing and that it just didn't explain it very well to newcomers. Um, do you remember like the didact in Halo 4, for example? That was like... yeah. The didact is supposed to be like a, like a big entity in the universe and they just kind of were like... <laughs> just wrote them out yeah. like because nobody understood what it meant who hadn't read the books and then the people who did understand what it meant were like why why is he gone like why is he dead in like the <laughs> space of a game uh so yeah i'm sure they'll find a way to bring him back because you know infinite being the soft reboot that it is and stuff but but yeah i think there's a lot of cool stuff there nonetheless and, and the encyclopedia i think really showed some cool stuff off there and like some of the concept artists man I say this about most games, like because the concept artists just make some like incredible stuff that I just couldn't dream of even putting onto paper. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's just it's just really fascinating to look at. Yeah, no, that'd be really cool. Cool. Uh, and also, uh, the we got we got a trailer for the two new maps uh, for season two that we spoke about last week. Don't know if you saw it. It's like two minutes long, and they just kind of like do a atmospheric like flyover of the maps. Um, what was it called? Catalyst, which is the arena map, and Breaker, which is the BTB map, um, mm. which both look very nice. I'd recommend having a look at it. It was it was quite a nice trailer, and they just did, it was like it wasn't like an action trailer, like you know how they usually do with maps. Uh, they just like did a flyover. Yeah. They were like empty with that the like the atmospheric sounds and just fl- flew over the maps. Um, uh, and generally, they're pretty cool. I mean, 
Catalyst is like a forerunner arena map. It doesn't look like anything we haven't seen before, but I mean, it, it looks nice. Breaker, on the other hand, looks really unique. It's like in a banished scrapyard, um, the BTB map. Um, nice. And there's like stuff that's moving and there's like a, as we spoke about, there's like a laser cutter that go, goes like through the middle of the map. I mean, stuff like moves yeah. around because it's it's like a scrapyard. Um, but I think I think that looks like a very very cool map. Um, yeah, so sounds awesome. But let's see how they play. Yeah, we'll have to see how they play. Yeah. Um, okay, and the last bit on Halo is one of the honorable mentions is that the Endless has been accepted as a trademark by Microsoft. And we spoke about this months and months ago, um, with the Endless supposedly being a maybe being like a DLC. It's uh, it's implied near the in the Infinite campaign that the Endless is what comes next without like spoiling it. Um, mm. So everybody thinks that that's like the next story expansion, which has now been expe- uh, accepted as a trademark. So um, it might be, it might not be. Who knows? Um, it could just be like a book or something. I mean, but it, it seems like that is probably the direction. So um, I think, and we'll get into this a bit later, but I think there's actually going to be a big Halo blowout um, for the game xbox showcase this year i think that's going to be a big big halo blowout so we'll have to see that okay um interesting that and the final honorable mention before we get into the new stories of the week uh was that and i just added this because i totally forgot um but there was a overwatch like show and the show revealed one of the new characters for the new game did you did you see this i did um, not no so so Jordan, I think her name was. She's like a soldiery type class. Um her kit looks pretty fun to be honest. Uh like it looks quite straightforward, but like pretty fun. Like kinda not too dissimilar from like Soldier, um, seventy six. Um mm. but I, I I just really like the art style of that game. I, I, if I remember she has like um it's like a normal firing gun and then she has like a rail gun which charges up as she hits her shots and the rail gun like penetrate so you've got to charge it up by hitting your shots she's got a ability which is like a slide like a a really mobile slide and then if you jump if you cancel out of it early you get a high jump so quite a lot of mobility okay. yeah and then her ult was i think it was a slow it was like a bit just a big like slow field i think it wasn't like quite a graviton it was a sl- there was another effect in there as well that i'm really blanking on so i'm sorry about that um yeah, like a big slow field. But yeah, she seemed cool. I'm sure there's some some other technical stuff I'm missing there. But um, the design looks cool. A lot of people were like zooming in and clicking on the trailer to see some of the redesigns for some of the other characters because they've redesigned most mm. of them. Uh, to to us, we probably wouldn't notice that much of a difference. But to the regular Overwatch players, you know, it's they, they're seeing small changes here and there. Um, and I forgot how many characters are actually in that game. Like just watching the trailer, you know, there was like like Hammy was probably one of the last few that we that got introduced while we were still playing am i right in saying that yeah 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 he always felt like quite a new um character back back when we were playing and and we were dropping off the game and stuff so i'm not sure who who came after that but um but yeah no i feel like doomfist came before Mm, i don't think so i think i think so I right, think right. So. I didn't think it was, but yeah. I, I again, I'm not really too sure, but yeah, he did kind of feel new in the sort of era we we left the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know actually the total sort of character list for for, for Overwatch if you ask me. Um, no, but I imagine I it's I quite think, high. I th- yeah, I think it must be like twenty at least. Yeah, um, we we dropped off. I think the newest legend that came out when we were like still like kind of trying to get back into it but basically fully dropped off was ash i remember ash came out um, yeah i never really played her but yeah that was one of the characters i saw and was like oh yeah i forgot she was in like yeah, a lot of people so, really liked stash uh, that's why i think overwatch is gonna actually appeal to us probably more than you like you're really um i guess people who really binged overwatch and still play it yeah. like every now and again now because i think there are so many characters we didn't experience their to their fullest or even at all just from the base game and we're going to get that plus new ones and 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 that sort of stuff so um yeah i'm actually yeah i'm actually pretty hyped for for, for overwatch too every single time i hear about it i'm like i get that a little bit more excited because i'm just like i could actually do with playing a game like that again 
Like that would be yeah. really fun. Um, yeah, I agree. And and we, hopefully we can actually rope in a decent group of friends into it now. Um, that, That's it, isn't it? We've, 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 we, 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 the industry has an obsession with three player parties and it's like let me play with more people um, yeah it's part of the reason why I think we had such a good time with Big Team Battle while that was you know still um, still popular uh, because we could get four in and then if five or six jumped in yeah no biggie come on down like you know um, yeah rather than having to do that awkward dance of like oh well should we split or should I just you know piss off and let everyone else play um, yeah. yeah yeah and Overwatch is very much like is, is it Six? Six? I think it's 5v5. Five. five. I think it's 5v5, right. yeah. Um, so, yeah, of course, like the fate of Overwatch 2 is like remains to be seen um, because, you know, when it comes out, it's still a question mark. They're ramping up kind of the, you know, the advertisements on it and, like, how much more will be added to it is still in question. You know, I know there's, like, more game modes, more maps, but, like, two new maps, two new game modes, and two new heroes it's like that does not warrant <laughs> a full purchase second game like yeah. and i know there's some redesigns in there and like character like you know reboots or a little bit you know but that's like not that's not cutting it for me you know i think we need to be looking at like four new characters at like the very least at the very least um, yeah and i'd say a handful of apps like i'd, I'd say like a decent I, i'd like to see like five new maps would be pretty nice um, you know, yeah. and it, again, I don't really feel like I'm asking that much, considering it's going yeah. to be a, a 65, potentially even 70 pound game, right? Um, you know, I don't think I'm asking too much. No, I don't think so either. So that's what I mean. It does it does remain to be seen. Um, obviously, I think people are, underestimate how popular Overwatch is, and you know, people on the internet like, like to like to declare things dead, like people get off on it. Um, so lots of people go around shouting that Overwatch is dead when it's drawing in like massive numbers and all its posts and actually the exact same thing was happening with the season 2 trailer for Halo might I add everyone's been screaming Halo's dead for ages and then they'll hate it on the season 2 trailer and got like 20k likes you know like 10k retweets stuff like that and it's like the engagement is still really high everybody wants to play this game it's just they don't want to keep playing the same stuff they just burn out on the yeah. same stuff um, so it's just that sort of thing um, but anyway Language, language is important, guys. Dead is not the same as being like, I want more. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, Just having a slow period, yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's right. Um, cool, okay. So, I'm sorry, I know I sped through that. Is there anything like you wanted to touch on before I before we move on to like the main stories at all? No, no, no you covered it all fine. Yeah, all good. Cool. All right. So, um, in terms of the main news stories, um, we have, first and foremost, Chris Avalo might recognize that name, former co-founder of Obsidian, um, speaking, having an interview about Fallout New Vegas 2. Uh, no, he didn't have an interview. Sorry, he, he wrote this on his own blog page um, on the Medium. Um, it's called... Was that your back? What was that noise? That was my back, yeah. <laughs> that was... I don't know, dude. That, that was it, bristle. It literally, <laughs> it literally stopped you in your tracks. You were literally just like, yeah, so he wrote this on his... Is that your back? <laughs> It sounded like a twig. It sounded like it stepped on a twig. (laughs) Yeah, dude. I love a back crack, man. Love a back crack. (laughs) I just look down and you're just like bent in half. (laughs) Just snapped (laughs) over my chair. Carry on. You're right. You're like, yep, yep, good. (laughs) Good to go. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, anyway, and, and Chris Avalone has been like had a lot of controversy around him from allegations of sexual misconduct. Um, he also got booted off Dying Light Two. We don't aren't sure why if that was because of those allegations and it was a bad look or because it was something that was ongoing with his current job. Uh, he has like outright denied all the allegations, so they are still allegations at this point, but they have been corroborated in a few different places, so it is a bit sus. Anyway, I don't want to make this like a, a drama thing, um, but he wrote about like how he feels about fallout just in general you know it was, it was like an artistic post more than anything else um mm-hmm. and he spoke about what he thinks about the possibility of a fallout new vegas 2 and essentially said that he doesn't think that if there is like it's possible now that bethesda and obsidian are now both under xbox but if that was ever to happen from what he understands it wouldn't be called new vegas 2 um which i mean i guess makes sense so i guess the question i think really here of that's worth discussing is would a f- follow-up to New Vegas, stay in New Vegas. 
I mean, what do you think? Uh, probably not. Yeah, I'd like to think they they'd move it over to a, a new area and do do a similar style, like have it within like a you know a you know I guess like a, a yeah Vegas is a city, right? No, what is Vegas? It's a state. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a city. Um, well, uh, yeah, Ve- yeah, Vegas is a city. a city. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, they could just do it in like a new city. And just like keep keep a similar theme, like you don't have to have like this whole grand scale um, Fallout Four or Five, which is like it's it's the entire world, right? Yeah, like, everything's post apocalyptic, and you go everywhere. Like you, you could kind of just yeah, you can kind of just be like Fallout New New York, <laughs> New <laughs> New California, right. you know, or something like that. You know, you you could take it in in different directions or just use like a, a a new city um i don't think they should keep it in vegas personally you know i think it's kind of be, been there done that i think you'll you'll see a lot of similarities um and hmm. maybe things that you feel are r- repeats and all that sort of thing so i don't know mm-hmm. At least that's yeah i mean it, i mean yeah it stands to reason doesn't it i mean like every fallout game has moved to a different place in every game mm-hmm I actually don't know where the other ones were. Come to think of it, I can't remember where four was. Um, didn't I haven't four. played three? Yeah, I'm not sure. So fat load of good we are. Um, yeah. But <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, um, New Vegas two being Las Vegas and Nevada. Um, I, I was always really interested, like where, um, like what happens happening in the rest of the world in the Fallout series. You know, like well, do a Fallout just... game over here. Bring it over to yeah. London. <laughs> Bring it no, over to the UK. No, because then we game, have to like... listen to Americans doing <laughs> like... British voice acting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that doesn't that never goes well. Or if it like you know uh, like somewhere in Europe. Um, and I, I understand like the whole thing with like Fallout is that it's kind of like you know um, America and it's like um, industrial revolution and like that was when the nuke hit and that's why everything like never really evolves um, past that and things remain like coal powered and et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah. And it turns, it turns to plasma and stuff like that, like, you know, like nuclear energy. Um, but like other countries I feel like would be really cool territory because they could do whatever they want with it. Like, I don't know, like, is that even a thing that's covered in the law? Are there vaults in other places in the country? Like, pres- like presumably not. Like vault tech wasn't a thing. So maybe for that reason, it wouldn't be doable. But if it's like a, you know, a blind spot in the fiction. Maybe that's could make yeah. something really. Well, unique. I mean, there are there are tons of vaults everywhere. They're all numbered. There's like hundreds of vaults, whether they're like worldwide or just within America. I don't know. They are um, just in America, from what I understand. Um, but I don't know. Well, like the ones we know of, I guess. Maybe should I say? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, what if you're like British royalty, you know, and you go into your own vault? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. go and explore the UK. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I, I think no, you're absolutely right. Um, I think it would be sensible to, to put it put, to put it somewhere else. Um, uh, and New Vegas too sounds stupid anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. whether this does because supposedly I think we have we have said on the show that like there are discussions going on about a New Vegas Fallout. Uh, sorry, a New Vegas two. I guess I guess the main difficulty is like marketing it. Like, how do you market a New Vegas two? to get the hype it deserves without calling it New Vegas 2, you know, because it would excite the hardcore fan base. But a lot of the core audience who, like, loved New Vegas 2 might not pick up on it if it's like, oh, New Chicago. It's like, oh, we... yeah. New Alaska. Well, I mean, you kind of like to hope that as long as you've got Fallout in front of it, that's kind of enough. Fallout is a is a very big name in itself, right? It's just like the next installment I suppose. in the franchise. Yeah. But you know, it's like it's like saying the Elder Scrolls, Black Marshes. You know, people will still get hyped mm. because it's Elder Scrolls, right? You know, yeah. It's got that in front maybe of the it. use of this, maybe just the use of a subtitle rather than a number is a bit of a giveaway, like to a lot of people. You know, instead of Fallout Six, no Fallout Five, it'd be Fallout something, and and that would be enough yeah. for people to make that link. 
but it's like a spin-off yeah. game. Oh, the last Fallout spin-off game I played was New Vegas. Oh, wicked! It's the same guys. This is going to be good then. You know, that whole thing. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Nonetheless, interesting to think about. Um, I, I mean, that I, we don't like. I don't know what's going to happen next with Fallout because that it's a while until we see another Fallout. Like, you know, in, in terms of a mainline entry. Um, yeah. Which I think Absolutely. when we spoke about this before, I think I think that's why we said that um, it's it makes sense for Xbox to be considering spinning up an Obsidian team to make one in the meantime. You're considering El- Starfields this year, then we're waiting for Elder Scrolls, then it's going to be Fallout like 2030, mm-hmm. mate. <laughs> 2030, mm-hmm. and that's like Fallout is such a cash cow that it's like you might as well get someone else on something um, in the interim. But yeah. Yeah, for Makes sure. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a smart a smart business move to do something like this. Um, yeah, before the next like main main instalment. Um, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Next up, a bit of a weird one. Um, Sony invested one billion dollars in Epic. Um, this is off the back of Lego investing one billion dollars in Epic uh, a week prior. Um, initial thoughts on this sort of investment it's it's very weird it's it's a, it's a very weird play i mean sony always saying they don't have money <laughs> i don't think sony say that <laughs> yeah no, no, i'm kidding yeah um no it's yeah it's 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 a bit of a weird one um in all honesty i i don't really know what to think of it apart from that it's just a bit odd um i mean the only thing that springs to mind (laughs) well no i think it's so they'll have you know they'll have shares um a little bit you know so the only thing that comes to mind here is is fortnite to a degree you know they're seeing how massively fortnite is exploding and that's gonna be i mean i don't think i'm overestimating Fortnite's popularity when I say that I think it's going to be the, like the next Minecraft. I mean, it kind of already is. Minecraft is like the most played game of all time, just so we can like establish that as a baseline. I think Fortnite's going to hit, hit those levels in the next five to ten years um, in terms yeah. of total play. You know, so in that sense, I think it makes sense that Sony want to have first dibs on like we want. You know. Like maybe this is the the start of them trying to establish like timed exclusivity, like we know happens with COD, right? Um, Potentially, yeah. Or like having that additional ability to advertise their characters in Fortnite, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. I know they've already had Aloy events. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've already had like Aloy and Kratos. Well, what if they like took it to another level and it was like a whole thing? You know, for God of War Ragnarok, it's like a limited time God of War, you know, Helheim event. And, you know, you've got like all the characters around the world as you play, you know, things like that. There's like more than just Kratos. So that that's like another layer of advertisement for them. Um, mm-hmm. So, it, it, and it's a beyond like just the advertisement side, which I think you know, there is a bit of an overlap, but it's kind of like the whole metaverse angle. Like with Lego investing, uh, you can't help but think like, Fortnite are just trying to like make a giant multimedia like advertising platform. You know, it's just it's, it strikes me as something that a lot of people want to get their fingers in. You know, yeah, and I guess get it in while it's still, I guess, relatively early as well, right? Before like it does. I mean, Fortnite has exploded, and if. It, if anything, it's probably maybe on a slight decline or it's actually stagnated a little bit um, compared to, you know, previous years. I don't know. Would you say that? I'm not, I feel like. No, I wouldn't. I, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have even said that before the big event, which was no building mode. No building mode got record downloads, record clicks. Um, people love it. People love the no building mode. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That, 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 that did come back and pleased a lot of people. And I think took a lot of people back. Um, hell, even I was tempted to give it a go again, but then I realised the game has Bloom shooting, and I'm not really, not really um, <laughs> that excited. About I, yeah, I downloaded that it. Competitive shooter. Oh, really? Did you actually give it a go? Mm. No, I never. I never did it because we never got 
we never like coordinated the boys to get on, but I, I did download it, and that they're going to be looking at those metrics and saying, "Wow, like if we can get him to download it, we're doing something right." Yeah, <laughs> yeah Jesus, Deck, is this the right IP address? Yeah, he downloaded it. The Deck. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it definitely just sounds like it's just yeah. I guess it's just getting on board with with this sort of stuff early and using it as like a, a marketing platform and you know, like you said, potential exclusivity for bits of content. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think that's probably it. But again, it's 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 a lot of money. You know, yeah, it's no it's no and small there's... sum, that's for sure. Yeah, I agree, and I think a lot of controversy around this came from the fact that um, Sony. I mean, I'm going to put it out there: Sony is spending more money, I think, than a lot of people thought they would. Me included, like not just on acquisitions, but on investments. You know, they're clearly seeing what's going on at Xbox and even Nintendo. Like we spoke about this a few weeks back, Nintendo acquired one of their closest partners. Um, yeah, I can't remember how much it was for. It might have been undisclosed. Um, and I think they actually they bought like a massive bit of land mass this week. Also, you know, we've been saying this for like thirty weeks now that you know a lot of these companies are really scaling up, especially since COVID. Um, that's kind of pushed things along a bit quicker. But Sony are spending more than I think a lot of people thought they would, and whether that's because they had more capacity than people thought, or they're borrowing money to do that, you know, whatever doesn't kind of irrelevant. But I think a lot of the controversy here is from what I saw that Sony, if you remember, maybe like four months ago, they closed down their Japan studio. So they they had a studio called Sony Japan Studio, I think it was called, and they closed that down. And there was a lot of people were quite upset because you know obviously. Part of the reason I think you have a PlayStation is for Japanese games, and that was their Japanese first yeah. party studio. Um, and they closed it down, and so it's, it's a bit weird that they would turn around in four months' time and be like, well, here's a billion that we can throw at Epic, but couldn't sustain Japan studio for another year or two. Yeah. Yeah, that is a bit odd, isn't it? Um, especially when you consider that so much of uh, you know Sony's market uh, area is 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 Japanese uh, J- Japan and Japanese right. games and yep. titles and stuff like that. It's it's very yep. weird um, to to do that, but yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, it uh, Epic are like quite a, like a scary big force at the moment. Mm. Um, I don't really know how much sway they have outside of Fortnite though. So, I mean, we'll have to see how the story evolves. Um, I could see this turning into a bigger partnership in the future, to be honest. So many like doing this. They like investing money. Uh, they did the same with um, whoever owns FromSoft. Kadakawa? Kadakawa? I can't remember. They, they have like a mother company who owns FromSoft um, and other things, you know, not just gaming. I think the multimedia. So only invested quite a lot in them. They have like a, a 1% share or, or something. Um or maybe more, actually, maybe 5%. Um, they like doing that. They like having their fingers in different pies. Um, whereas Microsoft is just like, <laughs> where we want to own the whole thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so that's where that's at. Uh, but yeah, bit of a weird one. See how it evolves. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, okay, let's... What's next, actually? Yeah, okay. We're going to skip down a story on the notes and then we'll come back to the previous one just so we can kind of knock out Halo uh, in one fell swoop. Um, But what's next is Vicarious Visions, who is an Activision-owned studio, um, have officially merged with Blizzard. You might be thinking, well, that's weird because aren't Blizzard owned by Activision? Activision Blizzard, we call them. Mm. Um, Yeah, it is weird. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so okay so from the bottom vicarious vision um is a studio best known for the development and supporting on the original spider-man games you know you remember spider-man back on ps2 etc etc um yeah. tony hawk pro skater series the crash series skylander destiny 2 port and uh to pc and most recently collaborating with blizzard on um diablo 2 resurrected uh if you have a look at like their history most of the stuff they've made is remasters or collaborations or support studios so there's very little stuff that they've made from the ground up there has been some stuff um but a lot of people i think their popularity really exploded with the recent 
reboot of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, which was like really well received. Mm. Um, and they rebooted it. You know, it wasn't wasn't a, like a remaster. Yeah. Um, so clearly, someone has decided that they would be better off suited as a Blizzard team. And people aren't happy about this. Um, I kind of get it. Um, but I also kind of don't. Um, in the sense that Vicarious Visions ha- are up, from what I've read, have their own like office space. They're like independent. You know, they're like satellite studio, not satellite, but you know what I mean? They're, they're not like in the same office yeah. space as Activision or, or Blizzard. They don't share office spaces. Um, they're just going to be helping as a Blizzard studio now. And um, people aren't happy because obviously what's been going on, what's been going on with Activision Blizzard has been dreadful. And yeah, to see them kind of moved around, I think is kind of annoyed people, like especially Blizzard, I guess. And what what I've been kind of thinking is, um, at least creatively, this feels like a healthier thing to be than being a cod mule. Okay. Um, yeah. Like they, I think they have supported on some cod games in the past, but we know that Activision has this kind of, you know, like creative bankruptcy at the moment where they're just like winding in studios to like help on card and it's like you know uh, you and, and we know that they're could have been cherry picked to do that if they i think that they might have just like been absorbed yeah into the call of duty yeah. effort when you know a lot of people love what they do even though they haven't done anything like wholly independent and i think some people are kind of frustrated as well that this is kind of going to be doubling down on the fact that they're just going to they're going to continue to be a support studio when clearly they have the chops for Something bigger. I think that's kind of the back and forth here. Yeah. Um, okay. And what you think? Even moving now into Blizzard, they're still they're still going to stay that sort of support studio. You don't think they're going to be they're going to get the reins to maybe do their I, d- own thing. I don't know. Well, I think I don't know. I, I maybe I'm just like ignorant of it, and you'll see. Like I made, like, I had like a whole, there's a whole Twitter thing that um, we went back and forth with uh, here. Um, maybe I'm just ignorant to this, but like I, I, when I saw this, I was like, that's good. I thought that oh, this is this is sounds like a reasonably good thing because I feel like they're going to have more creative freedom at Blizzard than they would at Activision. I know that sounds silly because it's Activision Blizzard, but yeah, Blizzard kind of I know you mean. make stuff <laughs> blizzard make you, you know we know they have unique unique ips in the works activision <laughs> the last thing i can think of was sekiro and that was like four years ago now obviously and that was from soft it wasn't that was just, that was a publishing it wasn't even made by them so yeah. that's kind of what my thought was i think creatively it sounds like a good thing you know in terms of the management and the whole scandal that doesn't that mm. doesn't seem like it's really going to make a difference because they're still under the same company so yeah that's kind of where i was at with it yeah yeah no, i think that kind of makes sense yeah with with uh activision's recent track record and stuff like that and with blizzard you know we we, we know one they're working on a lot of new stuff um that you know maybe they'll be brought on to help out with that you know like that new um uh, the survival game the survival game yeah yeah they they might be brought in to help out with that or you know like like you said they might just be given the reins to just be a bit more creative um and maybe do their own thing yeah no for sure yeah i think it's a yeah yeah i yeah i think it overall is and that that's not to yeah that, that that's not to, to downplay the fact that there are clear cons here um but i just i can't see this overall being a bad thing um just you know that there are some bad things about it and some good things about it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's the boring answer, but I think it's true. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, and, and, and I think that's the positive thing that barring any like manage managerial meddling, um, they're keeping their office space. That's what like we know for now. So like the culture will remain intact and things like that, and that's kind of what's important. And frankly, I'm like wanting to see what Blizzard could do with more help. Like Activision just hasn't shown me in the recent decade that they're capable of putting anything out <laughs> they just make card <laughs> like I'd, I'd much rather that go towards blizzard like i said so like creatively i think it's a good thing um mm-hmm. so yeah whatever yeah no i agree um okay is it just halo left that we've got uh because there is a lot to talk about i'm actually very excited to speak about this with you um 
Okay, no, there's a couple of other things, but we can do the Halo segment now. I think this makes sense. Um, okay. So, first and foremost, um, MCC first, Master Chief Collection. A big update uh, that the team has, 343 has been teasing for a while. Everyone's really happy with this, over the moon. Um, they've added... I don't know if they've added or if it's like a separate mode, but there's now Flood Firefight. That was never a thing, if you're not aware. Um, and that's on Halo 3 and ODST with co-op, co-op and full cross-play. Uh, full custom game browser support. Um, and that's just for starters. Um, like custom, there's, like I said, custom game support as well. Um, people have been loving it. They've added new like p- Flood variants, like tons of quality life updates. Um, and people are loving it. And I think... If you go and have a look at their Twitter account, they've put out like a screen, like a, is that like maybe like concept art? Um, it's like, you know, four ODSTs like back to back, like in the dark with flood closing. And I always like imagined there was a leak for a fake game for six, seven years ago called Halo Gravemind. Do you remember that? Halo Gravemind? Yeah, it was, it was like, this. and uh, it, it ended up being fake, but I remember seeing it and be like, wow, that, and it, it was this. It was like meant to be like a flood focused, like shorter campaign um, with either Spartans or ODSTs against like the flood. Um, and I just thought like atmospherically, it always looked really, really cool. You know, it's like almost like a bit zombie like, um, like alien like, even, you know, the films. Um, and like I said, it ended up being fake, but that was like the tone it struck with me. And, and this is kind of hitting that. I mean, it's in terms, like, it, it isn't for me. I don't think I would go back and play um this but i can totally appreciate what they've done here um and why people mm. would love this so much in the flood firefight yeah, yeah this is this is awesome yeah i was i was a big fan of um firefight back in the day i actually played it a fair amount um yeah. on um i can't remember you reach, i think i played I think. it quite a lot on reach yeah yeah that's it um yeah so i was a big fan that's of that started. and is that where it started? First firefight was I think Reach. So. I don't think firefight was in was in three. I guess that would so, make yeah. sense, right? It was a new game mode. Maybe I just really really liked it because it was yeah. new for that game. Um, but yeah, no, I was I was um, yeah, I was a huge fan of firefight. I thought it was really cool um, because we we were big fans of like Horde and stuff like that from Gears and like I think we we went into it thinking it's it's Halo Horde, right? So that's um, yeah, that's right. I, and I think this, yeah, the flood fits this perfectly, man. I think that's really, really awesome. Um, and I think it's just odd just to see like MCC just getting such a chunky update and still, you know, remaining in the spotlight kind of when a game like Halo Infinite launched. Um, it's just kind of strange that they're kind of still working parallel with each other, right? You know, normally when, a, when 343 or a studio makes their next mainline game, they drop everything else by the wayside a little bit and you know they they start um taking away support for it giving it the bare minimum and focusing on the mainline new installment right yeah um but it doesn't seem like it's that's the case for mcc so well that is like the one thing if if you were to ask like the the halo twitter critics which i wouldn't recommend doing because you'll probably catch like a venereal (laughs) disease but if you were to do that you would um, they they would tell you like if you ask them about three for three, they would mostly like just shout like rapid swear words. But the one thing that they will probably all agree on is that they've done a good job with MCC overall. Obviously, it was a total nightmare at launch for the first yeah. year, but everybody kind of agrees that they've done the right things and the place that MCC at now is amazing. And in fact, a lot of those same people say like you should have just copied MCC for uh, like Infinite in terms of like the features, you know, like the playlists and the um, the custom games, you know, things like that, theater, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the matchmaking options, I think is another one that people always say. So yeah, um, and I think, and I, I hate to say this because I know like it isn't reflective of the truth, but like one of the big things that went around last week is that Steam numbers, when this came out, the Steam numbers for MCC overtook Infinite. Um, really? Yeah, it doesn't so, surprise me, to be fair. Yeah, but like this is the thing people keep using Steam numbers to be like, oh, like Infinite's dead. And I've said this before, the, yeah. the Steam numbers for Infinite are quite low. Like they are lower than I thought they would be. But yeah. it's on Steam. There's no yeah, heritage that's... of Halo on Steam. Exactly. Yeah. PC players don't. PC players don't know Halo really. Um, 
you know, it's still in like the top 10. It fluctuates between like the top 10 or top 15 on um, Xbox, you know, because you can go on the store and have a look, which is like, again, lower than I think we would have thought it would have been at this point. But it's not like, it's not like dead. <laughs> like, no. it's, it's ridiculous. Um, no, it's not dead. It's just but, going through yeah. a dry spell and then MCC gets a cool new feature that's never been seen before, right? You know, it's... Yeah, totally. It, it's going to get overtaken. It's just one of those things. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah 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 exactly um yeah. but yeah totally agree this is really cool and I, th- I think they have said that they're looking to wind down development on mcc at the end of the year which a lot of people are quite upset about but it's like i mean as long as they keep the servers up and keep this going yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, eventually like what i was saying you know eventually needs to happen you know you need to work on the next mainline game and especially when you start when halo infinite starts becoming more of this overall big massive package and looking more like mcc but halo infinite right you need more people working on it you know it will have a forge it will have a theater it probably will have a firefight it will have a br (laughs) it's it's gonna have so much stuff in it you just you're gonna have to just start shifting your resource around and you're gonna have to drop mcc eventually um yeah yeah But nonetheless, that doesn't take away, you know, obviously from, from how cool this is. And I guess if it was something, small thing, when I, I had a quick look like online just to have a look at what it looked like, but they, they've added like a lot of atmospheric effects as well. Um, and it still looks old because it's like ODST and, and Halo 3, but you know, yeah. it's up and whatever. Um, but there's like, they've added like this cool like fog effects to like when you're doing flood firefight, you know, there's a lot of like flood and the music's different. Like, I don't know if you remember, I, I personally never liked fighting the flood that much. <laughs> I appreciate like a lot of people like quite liked it, but I thought they were just kind of a bit annoying. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. They, they were okay. Yeah. But yeah, they, right. Perfect. They were fine. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, what I did like though, like narratively, very cool. Music got to it. Like it was like, I don't know if you remember, it was like this, like, like this loose, like violin string. It was like, I say, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was that impression. Did it, did it really yeah, spark mate, a memory? It was actually, spark <laughs> gen, genuinely. I started right. sweating uh, well, since if, I heard that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but if you don't remember what I'm talking about, I'd, I'd just quickly whip it up on YouTube and just type in "flood soundtrack." You'll, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, so the music like that's playing with the atmosphere, and like, so it is very like this atmospheric, like horde-like experience. Um, and there's yeah, lots of other stuff that I really can't remember. Like I said, they've ad- they actually added new flood variants and stuff, so that they- it's more than just like spring cleaning. Um, it's quite actually uh, meaty, meaty update. Yeah, no, yeah, it's awesome, man. I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy for MCC. I think, I think that's uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, good for them. I agree. Okay, meat and potato time. Let's do it. Big old, big old lunch. Did you see this? <laughs> Did you see this story? Uh, which story is it? Start it. I, <laughs> the probably have, affinity. I probably have. Yeah, yeah. So, so certain affinity, the, the development team posted on Twitter, like officially, they were like, "We've always loved Halo. We've always worked on Halo. We're happy to announce today that we're strengthening. You know, we're deepening our relationship with Three Four Three to help on Halo with it." Okay. It's been like leaked for a while. We've spoken about this on the show because other people who like know this better than we do i've spoken about it in their shows um uh as have said that like certain affinity are allegedly working with three for three on like a halo game mode we've known that that's been like unofficial now it's official so affinity okay. have confirmed they're working we don't know what they're working on that part remains uh unofficial and, and so supposedly it's it's on a game mode which is what we'll come around to um mm-hmm. so d- did you was this did this fly under the radar for you no, no, no. I, d- I did hear this. I did hear this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what the rumors were was that Curtain Affinity are working on a BR, like a, a BR, you know, like with like some yeah. bits and bobs um, that are different. Um, and that the code name for that is Tatanka. Um, so that bit is obviously unofficial. Um, but what... I've seen a lot of leaks about this on Halo Twitter accounts, like like leaked Twitter accounts who have a good good track record on access to code threads and things like that and strings. Um, but also from like industry leakers like Jess Cord and over from Jeff Grubb as well. Um, but to quote what he said, um, Jeff, um, Jess Corden, that is from Windows Central, um, 
Exactly what Halo Infinite's a tanker is remains to be seen, but rumours I've received lately point to it having battle royale elements in the least, complete with a shrinking arena. I suspect it will be, have a unique twist or two to differentiate itself from the Call of Duty War Zones and Fortnite of the World. Uh, he said that it's been in development for over two years for a Damn. single game mode. And it's comparable to Warzone as a standalone app in its scope. So not that it's not a standalone app, well, we don't know, but it doesn't seem like a standalone, but in terms of its scope, it's similar to Warzone, which obviously is a standalone. So this thing is yeah. huge. Whatever it is, it's huge. Uh, supposedly, yet yeah, closing ring with some BR elements. Um, cosmetics will carry over, so, you know, it, it's going to be part of the package by the sounds of it, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And the idea is to bring in new players to Halo, supposedly targeting Season 3 to 4. Um, Interesting. So what are your initial reactions to that before we go? Oh, and sorry, last part that, that Jess said was uh, supposedly there are going to be ties into Forge, um, which is really novel because no other BRs, whether this is a BR or not, have user-generated content. Um, yeah, yeah, that's you know, kind of crazy. Like, I don't even know how that would work like with what people can make there. So, you know, that is kind of bonkers. So with all of that in mind, what are your reactions? I mean, I mean, firstly, I think it's kind of crazy that just like, certain affinity um it's like a studio is it's like just a studio is just working on a game mode for a game right <laughs> right like that's kind of that's kind of crazy to think about right it's not it's not like they're working on a game no no they're, they're working on just like a mode within a game like an entire studio um which is yeah which is bonkers and i think that in itself just goes to show the scope of it right um yeah. and and how and how big it, it really is so yeah. and then obviously halo br has been rumored for a long time um and we've always said that you know we think it's, it's a cool idea and we think it has a place in halo but just not right now like fix the core yeah. get well, not fix the core game make the core game better make it meatier get all your stuff in and then focus on the br and uh, I liked it when the guy said supposedly targeting season three or four. I'd like to think probably four is more realistic. Um, in, in my eyes, at least, I'd like to see it come in around season four because I want them to get their polished in multiplayer, tons of maps, get arena sorted, get Forge in there, you know, and really get some meat behind the actual Halo experience. And then season four, just to be like, here's this freaking br that we've had a studio like working on for us like you can just pick it from the menu or you can play the the awesome halo experience that we've been building for for three four seasons um yeah and i think that's really awesome um but then also that comes with its complications that uh infinite have already said that they don't like to split up the game modes and make playlists and all that sort of stuff because they don't want to segregate the player base they're too afraid it will like you know like if they were to like that that's why they bundled all the game modes together right into a um i don't know what it was called it was just like a so it had like team slayer it had like capture the flag it had all that rather than yeah. have individual it's like a modes. single hopper yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and like maybe this will you know split split the player base loads and like everyone would just be playing br or and no one will play the standard sort of arena experience um yeah so but then they're still on the application right they're still playing it um yeah so i don't really think it's yeah. it, it's a big deal but yeah well, i i think i think it's cool um basically i think i think it's pretty awesome um i'm just trying to picture how it would work right and, and hold that thought because like that i i have i want to have that conversation with you of like what this kind of looked like um yeah because okay. there's some other information here which might help you kind of visualize that a bit better um, okay cool but on the match on the matchmaking side yeah i think i think it's a good point and i think 343 have been making an effort to think about ways to like have more game modes and maybe you know change the matchmaking parameters so that they can have more game modes with smaller populations in each etc cetera, etc cetera. um you know they've already said that three game modes are getting added like permanent game modes are getting added for season two, uh, which is like King of the Hill, Last Barn Standing, and uh, one other that I can't remember. 
um, land grab, maybe? I can't remember, something like that. Anyway, so there, there are new game modes coming. Um, I, presumably they're coming as permanent playlist hoppers, like you said, but maybe they are getting mm. mixed into other ones. But they've said, like, in feedback, like, yes, we agree, you know, we want to have more playlists. And so you're like, maybe it's just something to do with like shifting around uh, matchmaking parameters. Um, in terms of certain affinity, yeah. Um, like, in case you don't know, of, you know, for the, you and for, you know, for the listener, um, certain affinity are about 200, according to the Wikipedia page as of 2021, are about 250 uh, employees. That's a, like, pretty it's, big team. It's a pretty big um, studio. Certain affinity also are made up largely uh, of ex-Bungie staff. Okay. Mm. Uh, so the, the it was founded by Max Hoberman, who was like a big name in the Bungie team that made Halo at the time. Um, obviously, they've staffed up, so it's not just ex-Bungie staff, but like a big chunk of them is ex-Bungie. Um, and if you have a look at the games they've made, like on the Wikipedia page, this is how... I'll sk- I'm not going to do all of them, but I'll skim through them. Halo 2, Call of Duty World at War, Left 4 Dead, Halo Waypoint, COD Black Ops, Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 4, COD Ghost, Halo Master Chief Collection, Doom... Halo Modern Warfare Remastered, Halo Infinite. <laughs> That's been their work. So they, yeah, they've done a hell of a lot of contract work on Halo anyway. Mm. Like that's been 70% of their work. Um, and, you know, there is a question to be had of like, how will their, like Xbox probably doesn't want them to get away, I imagine. <laughs> like mm. uh, if this was, like there, it looks like there's a real opportunity opportunity for an acquisition here, and it's not like like by the looks of it, Xbox likes studios to prove themselves before they get acquired um, to some degree, you know. Um, and with this team having already worked on Halo so much, it wouldn't surprise me if Phil is kind of licking his lips here um, to scoop these up and just say, "Yep, yeah, just just help with three four three, like just just help them." Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. Um, but then I guess it, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I could definitely see that being a thing. Um, and it kind of just makes sense, right? Um, if they already work so much with Halo, um, now and in the past, and and then and now they're doing this this big project for Halo Infinite. Um, it kind of makes sense, but I mean, it, it, if that were the case, do you think they would just remain the studio and then just work with three four three and potentially other other projects, or do you think they would just get absorbed into three four three as a well? whole? Um, I'd like to think they remain certain affinity, um, but it's a good question. I mean, there is there's always the possibility they just merge. Um, yeah, exactly. And just like how we're talking about with Vicarious Visions, you know, they keep their own office space and everything. Because uh, they're in yeah. Texas, whereas I'm pretty sure 343 is in Redmond, you know, near um, the Microsoft home base. Um, mm-hmm. I think the only bump in the road here is that certain affinity are owned by Leo. Leo, they're the parent company. And the parent company of Leo is Tencent. Uh, so Leo have 20% share in certain affinity. And Leo, Leo is the same company that uh, owns... So they own Splash Damage as well, Digital Extremes. Um, what is the the biggest game that I would say that Leo have under them is... Uh, man, what's it called? What's that one that Jake played for, for ages? That looter game, the free-to-play uh, one. Fantasy the, Star Online? No, nah, not that one. Before that, I think like five years ago. Um, with like the Cyborg Ninjas. Oh, and it's Warframe. like parkour... Warframe, thank you. That's probably like their, their biggest game that they have under them. They're the publisher, but they have like six studios under them. Um, okay. But yeah, just to give you an idea of who they are. Um, okay. So that would be the only wrinkle. Um, they don't. They have twenty percent in certain affinity rather than full ownership. So Xbox would have to pay out for that, buy off them. But yeah, I, I mean, I've got to think. Like this has got to happen. Right, and like, the reason I say that is because like what happens if certain affinity finish this, and then they get contracted to do other work like who like 343 now has to support split resources yeah. and support the mode that that they made and that would be pretty tricky so you know that's the problem yeah it's kind of like it's kind of a weird one isn't it it's it's like a, a, a we a, a microsoft or uh xbox just waiting to see 
how it turns out and like how this whole development cycle works for this game mode and if it turns out to be a hit and great then they're like fantastic we're buying you but then if, if that's not the case anyway um i don't know yeah i i, I guess that's that that's kind of what they're doing right um, but then if it doesn't work out or the game mode isn't quite what you expected and you don't buy them and then they move on to something else and you've just got a game mode that you know it's hard to support because these um certain affinity are now working on on other stuff and 3.3 are picking up the support for it and then it's just going to eventually just drop by the wayside isn't it you know it's a game yeah, mode exactly just leave so yeah i mean it's definitely a risky move it's definitely a bold move um you know especially on the scale of things to add something like this to um to halo infinite and an arena shooter to its core right um yeah but I, th- I think it's i think it's pretty cool man yeah absolutely i think this is really what feeds into like i've said this so many times on the podcast but like from the stuff i've seen it's not like behind the scenes but like i follow a lot of like leaks and rumors accounts that have, like, like i said have access to code and stuff like yeah. there's so much stuff in the pipeline um and 343 just seems to be taking their time making sure the, the core game is settled before they start throwing stuff at it or you know making sure that they can put it out in packages which are marketable um yeah and, and meaningful um and this is just one of the, the fact that there has been a team for, for two years on a single game mode um makes me think that this has been prototyped and there are lots of of the data suggests that this has been prototyped like over five thousand. like the game mode has been played five thousand times so like it's playable so i don't think this is like yeah. far off so getting into the nitty-gritty um when people are saying BR mode, all we all we know is that there somewhere in this game mode there is there is a closing room. That's the last information we heard. Um, mm-hmm. And and what was and the other one is that we keep hearing is that there's BR elements. That could mean a lot of things. I think. Yeah. So I'd recommend giving uh, at Halo Hub GG a follow on Twitter if you're interested in seeing what they're saying about it because they have more information and I'm just reading from their Twitter. But this is what they've said. So regarding the BR like mode everyone is talking about, we want to caution everyone that we've been very carefully, we've been very careful not to call it a battle royale, as it looks like more of a fusion of different modes slash concepts. Um, Jess Corden's reporting, which our evidence supports, has repeatedly stated that the mode is designed to be newcomer friendly. Thus, we don't expect the mode to have a highly competitive focus, likely. Uh, to avoid it trying to compete with the traditional arena style of HCS, Halo competitive scene. Um, uh, in the screenshots of the setting settings we shared, um, we were sent over a month ago, it looks like this mode will feature elements akin to Halo 5's Warzone and possibly Reach's Invasion. Too long, didn't read. Do not expect a hardcore BR like Apex, PUBG, etc. Okay. Yeah. So... This does it kind of fit to, more to what I was imagining. Yeah. It starts to beg the question of like, okay, what actually is this? Um, because, you know, if it's... And I think maybe maybe that is just because we've kind of gotten used to the idea of like a, a BR is, you know, 100 teams and there is teams of three and you get to the end and you must finish by killing. You know, none of these game modes have like objectives. Like some of them have like side like stuff. You can other like it's not much though. You know, like these aren't objective game modes. They're death matches for you know, however many teams of three. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then some other information here I've got is that. Uh, Tatanka used to be called Big Team Tatanka, the, the game mode, used to be called Big Team Operations and was play tested around 2019. It was temporarily shelved as it was bricking tech to test Xbox Ones. Um, <laughs> supply lines were a part of it. We don't know what that means, quote unquote. Uh, and that's now been renamed to Supply Runs. So these are my two questions that I've like posed um, that I think as, as like a good discussion around this. So firstly, um, would a traditional BR in Halo work? You know, let's say let's say it's like, for the most part, traditional Halo, no, traditional BR with a Halo 
coating and some other like stuff here and there. You know, maybe there's like equipment. Obviously, there's like power weapons. Obviously, there would be like Halo vehicles, right? Which I think is probably one of the only few games that would actually be able to do that quite well. What would that look like? And would that be interesting? That's my first question. Hmm. Yeah, um, I think... I think it could work as a traditional BR. I'm I'm literally just trying to picture the whole like drop in, like grab loot scenario, fight. I'm trying to picture like the movement, maybe like finding a grapple and using that to get some high ground to like help kill a team. You know, all that sort of stuff. I'm just trying to picture it and sort of alongside Apex. And I can kind of see yeah. it working. Um but then I think so. But it's like, does it become more of a focus on like power weapons? In which case, it starts to play quite differently. Do you know what I mean? It's like, in the sense that you're not looking for balanced loot. Everybody's dropping in. What is everybody dropping in with a pistol or like an AR? Like descoping? How's that going to yes. affect it? Like, does everybody start with grenades? Um, you know, there's automatic healing in Halo. You know, your shields go back up after. Is that gone now, or is that like assuming that that is still the case? How does that yeah. like affect the speed of play? You know. Um, and that, like all of that stuff, I think starts to pose some really interesting questions, you know. Um, because I'd, it's not I'd like... actually like I'd picture actually it working better without heels, like like not not like your like syringes, your med kits, your shield cells, or like your your armor plates for Warzone. Like I think just the automatic healing makes more sense for like the tempo of like the fights and the and and the gameplay and stuff. Um, I think you think be more it does com- combat um, eccentric, eccentric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. I think it does, but I think they're like there is something to be said about. Like, I think they would have to put the health up because you know you can get team shot yeah. by two people in arena and get deleted, let alone three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> blink and you yeah. die. Um, mm-hmm. And things like you know, like grenades. Are we spawning in with frags? Like frags, are, you know, like Apex is very different. Frags behave very differently. Um, in Halo, they're very powerful. Um, or is yeah. that just part of like the combat? Is it just the, you know like the golden triangle? Is it just the fact that actually you know grenades are an important part of this of this combat, and you will have them all the time, um, and that's just how it works. And so yeah, I, I think you start getting to, into this in, interesting like territory of like would it work? Um, yeah, and yeah, like I was saying with with yeah with like Apex. You know, heirloom weapons, you know, your Krabers or, you know, whatever's in there at the moment. Spitfire's still in there, G7's in there, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Those are, the, those are the weapons which are, like, reserved for... These weapons are more powerful than everything else. Like, barring the yeah. meta, like, these are designed to be more powerful for this season. In Halo, there's a lot more than that. Like, do you know... Oh, there's tons, like, yeah. And, and there's also a lot of, like... Especially in Infinite, because I think, you know, they have done a fantastic job with the weapon sandbox. Weapons do very different things. You think about the heat wave. You know, you think about the, uh, I can't even remember the name of the of the grenade launcher. What's that thing called? Uh, scatter shot. No, that's the shotgun. Um, yeah, I don't know what it's called. Com- compulsion <laughs> cannon uh, or something. <laughs> compulsion cannon. <laughs> I like it though. So it's it's called just... something. Yeah. Anyway, you know what we're talking. The one where you you know it has like a gravity. Yeah. Uh, graviton yeah. effect and you can bend gra- so like there's a lot of weapons that like like plasma pistol there's a lot of weapons that have a lot of utility um, and then there are a lot of weapons which are like designed to be overtly powerful like mm-hmm. wandering around a BR with a one shot headshot sniper rifle you know yeah. a rocket launcher you know um, an energy sword like some of this stuff it it sounds good like to be honest I think when you start thinking about it like you can have a lot of fun with that can you um, yeah. and then you start throwing like equipment into the mix you know, like, how does that start to work? Um, and I think that could work. I think it could work, I guess, would be my answer. Like, in, ter- yeah, in terms of, like, a tra- traditional BR with a couple of Halo twists. I think so, yeah. And and, and do you see it as as your as your standard 3v3 or, or, like, a 4v4 or... I mean, and would it have its game yeah. modes like Apex where you can queue as a three, you can queue duos or anything like that? You know, will they give you options to to, to, to change it up? Because I think Warzone standard is four, is, is four player squads, isn't it? I don't think they do three player squads. How was it? I think it's I, four I, I, player in my head squads it was. for Warzone. 
in my head it was it was three, but you you might be right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll fact check. But there that. is, I mean, you, yeah, you, you'll see um, on some of my notes a bit further down. It seems like there are options here for duos, trios, and quads. Um, that that seems to be the what, what what is happening. But obviously, none of this is confirmed, um, and that could mean really anything. Um, and I suppose what. Like while we're on this topic, because I think this one is more easily easy to imagine, maybe actually I don't know. But was that the idea that they're saying that this is targeting? This is like meant to bring people in. This is meant to be your casual mode. You know, a lot of people have said that arena can get quite sweaty, which is like fair enough. B two B is a bit looser, but generally the games are quite good. Like you have a lot of close games in Halo Infinite, and that's how it goes. This is meant. This is meant to be in more casual mode, and like how I think a lot of the definitely Apex, it's quite like an intense BR. Like it's you know. It, it's like hyper competitive, um, in the same way that I think Halo Arena is like quite hyper competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about a more casual BR? You know, you've got things like the sandbox. You've got like warthogs flying around. You've got ba- people fighting over banshees and wasps. You know, I think one of the things that I think makes this very very cool is that I can't imagine vehicles in Warzone pissed me off. Vehicles in PUBG pissed me off. Yeah, vehicle. Oh, generally, we're not like vehicle people that much. I don't think in FPS games, but Halo is one of the few games that I'm like. It's quite fun to actually get yeah. get in a vehicle. I think that would work really well. So, overall question to you: You know, what would you think of like this this idea of like a hyper casual BR that's like really focused on the sandbox and vehicle? Not I mean, focused on, you know, has all these uh, elements. I think I think it's quite a cool idea as long as it just doesn't feel like that. It, it's a very hard line to draw between it being competitive and being fun because like so many people depending on the player you are will just find it really irritating and feel like it's wasting their time if you were to like spawn in you drop you get loot and then someone's just blasted you with like a wraith or something like that there was just like a random spawn wraith somewhere and then you have to go through this whole process of you know you finish your game you load back in you drop again and you loot and it can feel like a bit of like a an annoying time waster if you were to die cheaply and to something that that you know feels cheap and irritates you you know like that whole like oh why don't you just 1v1 me bro you know that sort of feeling like get get out of the vehicle yeah. stop cheesing it sort of thing i think mm. that would be the main issue with it and then the flip side I to see. that is you know if you don't make vehicles powerful then they're just going to be boring and no one would use them and it just it just won't work, you know. That that part of the BR will become flat. Um, so yeah. it's 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 really hard to to sort of draw that line. Um, and I mean, speaking as someone who basically only plays a competitive BR, I've never had any experience with a casual one. You know, I would find it kind of annoying sometimes um, because I know when I get killed by someone in Apex that's just using like the meta weapons or you know the, the the guns that are the best right now or op i get i can get pretty annoyed and i can get pretty salty about it so at least that's my take on it um mm. i i well I yeah i mean basically it, it depends on the it depends on the layout of the game mode really because you know maybe maybe the uh nature of it being more casual means you have more respawns you know maybe the nature of it means that you know um there isn't so there's like less of a focus on on meta weapons you know i feel i feel like that to a degree like if it's less casual it takes the sting out of being blasted by the, the weapon currently sticky sitting at the top of the meta uh, mm. but i'm with you in the sense that you're saying is that if it's more casual things might be treated a bit looser um, yeah. and that could be exploited and that could be annoying um yeah. Yeah, and I guess the way I was thinking of it, like just because I hadn't even thought of like what you're saying there, like if they were like, so somebody got like a scorpion, you know, and I just like, you're not even responsible for that person getting a scorpion, yet you get blasted exactly. over the map and one tapped. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think I think there are counters to that, but like I think that's kind of something that happens with all BRs, right? You know, like just a random team pops a Kraber, one bangs you, and that's it, gone. Um, mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I can imagine there being like, uh, like forward operating bases, maybe like you know on, on each side of the maps, and you ping it, and it's like a sixty second countdown. You're like the division two sort of uh, division, you know, like in the dark, uh, whatever it's called, the dark clans. Yeah, dark, <laughs> dark zone. 
That's right. And it sends off like a beacon. And everyone's like, oh shit, someone's trying to spawn in a scorpion. And then if you manage to get that off and defend it, yeah. then your reward is that you get a scorpion. Um, yeah. I don't think I necessarily would stop it being annoying if you see a scorpion roll around the corner and you get blasted. But it adds some like sandbox elements to it where it's like there is competition there, but it's a way to bring these things into the game without it just being like, oh, I spawned near it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think so. Yeah, that's, that, that's not a bad idea with the whole like beacon and fight them off and then you get it if you survive sort of thing. Um, yeah. That's not a bad idea. And then that could be kind of fun in turn, in, in like return for like a casual experience because you're drawing all these players in. And then, and then if you do get the scorpion, then you, you just feast, right? Because everyone's just like flocked towards your beacon and, you know, you manage to yeah. fight them off get the scorpion and you know now now you've got like 20 kills potentially under your belt the squads are running <laughs> away from you so it, it could definitely yeah, feed right. into this power fantasy and just having fun like for sure um and i think it's just adapting your mindset into it like they just not need to advertise it as a br i think if that's what they're going for because then i think it will create this annoying thing that i was talking about of people getting frustrated and feeling cheesed or feeling like it's too loose and like I think they just need to avoid using the term BR because um, mm. that yeah. is, you know, that term is competitive first person shooter, last man standing, isn't it? You know, that's what it is. Um, so, yeah, at least that's, yeah, that's my take on it. But. Yeah, no, no, no. I think that's, that, that is a good point. Um, and I, like, I suppose the, the other part of this conversation, one of the, one of the big, one of the big uh, things that I noticed that if we were to have that conversation, you know, like, what would like a non-fancy Halo BR look like? You know, it's literally just Halo Arena, but there are power weapons scattered around the map, equipment scattered around the map, vehicles, you know, and you drop in as a team of three versus, you know, well, uh, 20 other teams. Um, mm. There are no... Uh, um, I can't remember how it works in Fortnite, actually. But there are no, like, attachments in Halo. That's not a thing. So, like, yeah. the looting side wouldn't be as much of a focus you know obviously like True. body armor presumably is not a thing and it's like how does fortnite work does for, for, fortnite doesn't have attachments out there actually now that i think about it does it it just has like rarity i don't think it does but i haven't played fortnite since like season two so who knows but no yeah, i don't yeah, think yeah. it does no i don't think it does either so so maybe it would be more and more akin to that because I, I yeah and i i don't know again it, it's not that it's a good thing or a bad thing it's just different um like it's sometimes like spending having to rely on the loot that you land on, like can be frustrating. But on the other side of it, you know, obviously getting um, getting the loot and the right attachments um, is part of the micromanagement and the micro strategy of it. You know, you find a barrel, and you're like, I'm going to hang on to this and hope I can find something later. Things like that. Um, yeah. yeah. But that would be like that would be foregone that you wouldn't get that in Halo. But what you would get is maybe things more in line with equipment and you know how I can make use of that in the sandbox. So. Yeah, it. I think like if you were to like strip it down to its basics, that sort of casual BR would work, and that's not to say yeah. there wouldn't be elements of strategy there, but it would be more casual and that it's less intense and there's less to worry about. Yeah. Um, and I also don't think that's to say just because I, I, I thought about this immediately when I read this that like they're trying to bring new players in just because that's like the focus now. It doesn't mean like you if this is a success. You can like bet they're gonna make a, like a competitive scene for it. Yeah. Like oh, if absolutely. this takes off, they're, they're gonna be like, give it six months, and they're gonna be like, oh, we're doing world's first, you know, Halo to tanker or BR whatever championships. So like, I don't believe that. Like, as much as it's designed to ball people in, I don't think there has to be a low skill ceiling for that to happen. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, but I think Halo's always been very good at that, even with Infinite. I think there's a low skill floor. You can pick up the controller and just play and have a good time. Um, but there's, you know, there's a ridiculous amount of like tech and stuff that you can do and learn to, to really sort of optimize your play. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was the first part. Good. I think that was a good discussion. The, the second part is if this isn't a BR and this is in fact like a more of a mix of invasion and BR, which, are, or like, you know, think of like galactic conquest and battlefront. Think of like, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, or invasion. Um, a lot of people are comparing it to. What does that then look like? Because we've got other information here um, with like settings on the game mode and what could be in it. Um, and I'm just going to read a couple of them out before we answer this question. Um, 
So some of the settings, again, from the Twitter account, Halo Hub uh, GG, um, are uh, respawn in drop pod, use sudden death, use individual life balls, starting respawn tokens, containment zone enabled, uh, alternate loot item table, containment zone final shrink. So, so all of the things I'm saying either have like a value of true or false. Uh, some of them have numbers. Um, mm-hmm. Execute enabled, revive enabled, bleed out enabled, um, operations enabled, capture operations enabled, supply run operations enabled, destroy operations enabled, hoard operations enabled. Um, and there's been a lot of strings that I've seen that have indicated that there are like there's either a lot of different operations and side objectives, or there's like, you like move through it. Like when I said galactic, what did I say it was? You know what I'm talking about from Battlefront. Yeah. You know, when you move, mm-hmm. you like push through the ship until you get to the final one, destroy the core. Yeah. That makes it very much sound like that as well. But that's just like a so then we game mode. That's just... Right. Exactly. So like, what yeah. are we talking about? <laughs> because, because there's also information here that suggests that there's duos, trios, and quads. So like, what is this game mode? <laughs> Duos, trios, and quads. So how do, how do these things combine together to make an actual functioning game mode? This is so the, uh, like part of me was thinking about this. Is this like, is this like a BR and like a MOBA? Yeah. Like, That's but then it's I like potentially thinking. Yeah. Is this like can it be because it's like MOBAs are always like team shooters. Unless they're going to make Spartan classes, which I doubt because there's like customization, which they need to time from the rest of the game. Um, we would have, I think we would have heard about that by now, but I mean, maybe not. But then again, even if it's a MOBA or a team shooter style thing, again, it's still just a two team thing. It's just it's team A versus team B, it's, right? It's not, it, you uh, know, if they go. Not BR for, at all. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know. It, it's literally, it's almost impossible to kind of picture what what any of these settings would mean. Um, and like well, that's of, what I mean. But like, pull it together. It's like, but clearly there is some BR influence here. That's the thing. But it's like clearly also not BR. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, bleed out. Like, also, like, you know, it's like people can get downed and be rezzed. You know, obviously uh, that that's the thing. It's not just elimination. It, it 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 strikes me as like there's like a bit of trials influence here, like trials of Osiris, and the fact that like respawn tokens is that like so for your team you have a limited number of respawn tokens, and if you die you just spawn on your team. Like maybe you drop in at the beginning, but you have a limited amount of respawns as a team. Maybe this is just like expanded multi team. You know, so instead of like four teams of three, we're talking like you know ten teams of three. So it's not like massive like or big like Apex PUBG or Warzone is. But it's that, but with side objectives and objectives get you points, you know, or maybe they give you access to better weapons like Warzone was uh, in Halo 5. Warzone? Yeah, Warzone Halo 5. Yeah, I could see that potentially working. Yeah, it just drops drops you all on part of the map and you just go and do like PvE objectives and get loot and buff yourselves and then... Just meet other squads so that's, right, and take them out. Yeah, well, that's a, you start getting into the territory of like, oh, actually, hang on a minute, BRs haven't done this before. So what is this? You know, like, like what BR has objectives? It's not the yeah. objective is to be the last squad standing. So like, are we playing for points? Are we playing for kills? Or are we trying to survive? Like, what what is it here? So like, that's the you know those are the questions that start coming up. And I suppose I suppose that is like what makes a BR right. It's last squad standing. Yeah, and if it's that, then I have to imagine the objectives are like they afford you maybe more respawn tokens, maybe better weapons, maybe yeah. ve- access to vehicles, like we were talking about. I mean, stuff like that does exist in in Warzone to an extent, but you know, it's the ultimate goal is to still be the last squad standing. But there are side missions and objectives that can earn you cash so you can buy like loadouts of fully kitted weapons and all that sort of stuff like that that's a thing in right. warzone um so you can basically you just deck yourself out to help you be the last squad standing so that sort of stuff and like as you were just mentioning you know that does exist already it hasn't been exist it doesn't exist in terms of doing it through like a pve objective 
like clearing out a camp of enemies or taking out like a mini boss while another squad is also trying to take out that mini boss too so it's like you know you're trying to focus on pvp and pve to get this reward and again that starts to yeah. feel a bit mobery right like the fire giant dance and the gold fury dance in smite you know all that sort of stuff um it just it seems like a, a, an amalgamation of just everything and I just, it, 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 I feel like it would be pure chaos. I just, <laughs> what I'm picturing in my head is pure chaos. Yeah, <laughs> just, right. Like... But this is what I mean. So it's like you know, we managed to we managed to squeeze out like a, a reasonably refined vision of what a Halo BR could do, and we're like, yeah, that that could work. I think that could be cool. And then you start incorporating these elements. And you're like, what are we talking about here? Because like clearly, there's some other stuff going on here. And that, so when we start taking, looking at the bigger picture, you know, we zoom out to the previous conversation we had, this has been development for two years. Mm. This, <laughs> either they really struggle to find like a compelling reason to like give Halo a BR, which doesn't strike me as the truth because 343 has been very like transparent that there isn't going to be a BR in Halo. Okay. Sometimes companies say that and PR says things that they don't mean. <laughs> so yeah. not impossible. Or they've been prototyping the ever-loving hell out of this to like make something which feels like Halo, which brings in other audiences and which kind of works. And they finally landed on something which clicks um, because you don't sit on a single game mode for two years without finding some degree of success. Hmm. Um so I kind of feel like we are looking at something wholly unique here. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, realistically, it, prob- it probably is a mix of Warzone and BR to some degree. How that's going to work, I don't know, because Infinite doesn't have rec packs, um, you know, in terms of like the loot and stuff. Um, well, I was saying like, so, the, I was yeah. thinking like the capture operation, supply run, destroy, all those sort of things where you can have them enabled or not maybe that's just like the types of missions that you can find on the map when you spawn in like yeah the ty- yeah the, the, the types of things you can do um to reward yourself with points that you could spend at a loadout station similar to warzone right where you could you could go into these areas and use your cards to deploy things and buy weapons and stuff like that in game Maybe it's done through like a, a a point system that you earn by completing operations. You spawn in things. Um, yeah, mm. I don't know. Which, which I mean, it's how that's how the campaign does it. So that wouldn't be too far fetched. You know, yeah. not that you spend it's like a currency, but you build up. You know, your what's it called, valor, isn't it? Yeah, you build up yeah. your valor and you drop stuff in at the four, at the fobs. So I think that there's probably a precedent for that. Um, but then yeah. It, yeah, it just starts to become a question of how does that work if there are, you know, uh, for the rest of the notes, if there are 20 teams of three or 25 teams of four. Hmm. Yeah. Like, is this map the size of a continent? Like, <laughs> like how big is this map? You know? Yeah. Um, it's just done on the whole ring. The map is the Halo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the only way they would be able to accommodate all of this. Like, yeah, so like, I think you're right. That I think when we start factoring in these other things, I think we start to get a better picture of like why people are considering this a more like casual BR because there are. But I mean, yeah, it's hard to. I, I mean, it is to a degree, but like, but that's, it's just that it's like it's not to say that just because there are PV, PVE elements it can't feel competitive you know it's like hunt hunt showdown is pvp but that that always feels like reasonably competitive yeah um true i guess it's just not like at the pro level but i guess yeah like fine um mm. yeah no i, I, so, I, I yeah. agree with that. yeah it's 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 very very interesting to think and talk about um and it makes me really excited for what it could potentially be and and I've always mm. I've always wanted something like a war zone or an invasion, like spin off or like you know a, an evolution of those game modes to come back. Like so, I'm yeah I'm I'm pretty excited um, that that this is happening. Um, but yeah yeah, just just really cool overall. I think. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I, I think there is there is something probably 
you know, like like we said loads of times, there's something quite like magical about I think the the energy <laughs> that the like B, BTB can bring about. And mm-hmm. I think once you kind of like like cut the fat off the size, like it's it's like taking the magic of a BTB but condensing it into like more intimate battle royale teams you know yeah does that make yeah. sense so you know instead of having like six person seven person teams which is like you know a lot of chaos and fun in and of itself but then like shrinking that down and having like a little bit more strategy and being like okay you know I, I think there's something quite appealing about that that like arena doesn't quite hit it because you're not like there are power weapons and but there's very rarely like vehicles and there's not usually enough to like coordinate but having like somewhere in the middle of btb and arena where it's like in the sense of what your team is and you have strategy to try and move around the map, take out teams, Mm -hmm. um, secure vehicles. And, you know, like having, having a warthog in BTB is a bit crazy because, (laughs) and maybe this is just infinite balancing. I don't know, but because you have a whole team trying to shoot you down, like it's very hit or miss whether you have any success. Mm -hmm. Um, And also there's usually only two of you or three of you in it out of a whole team but having a whole br squad in a single warthog i don't know that just sounds fun to me yeah and then only (laughs) yeah and then only rolling up and potentially fighting another squad rather than like you said in btb rolling up and just having like everyone on the team just shoot you and just destroy you in an instant you know the warthog would feel more powerful and a more useful tool if you just rolled up to another squad of four with one just sort of yeah um yeah, yeah, no, I agree. And yeah, it's it sounds it sounds fun as hell. Like for yeah. sure. Like you you can imagine like some really fun moments there, can you? Like you, you manage to secure yourself a warthog, you fly yourself over a cliff, you see your team, you splatter one of them, one of you chucks a plasma out the out the passenger seat, yeah. and then you all jump out and like just punch the last guy to death. Yeah. <laughs> like, do, you know, do, you, do you think I think some of that Gatling? warthogs and stuff like that or do you think they'd be like razorbacks i think so do you think they'd have weapons? i, I imagine they'd yeah i'd imagine they'd be both um yeah because i mean i think can't the razorback fit more people in like so if you're playing quads for example yeah that'd work. yeah yeah exactly so, yeah i'd like to think both and you know as of right now the vehicle sandbox for infinite is like not that great um you know there's like gun gooses and there's warthogs and there's choppers which need a bit of balancing i think they are getting a bit of balancing banshees as well are but there's things like missing things like favorites like falcons you know like that'd be great yeah. you know two guns on the side and a, and a pilot and um yeah like more group vehicles i think would start to enhance that experience more and more but that's when we're talking about the future of infinite this is what we mean like this stuff will only get enriched and enriched as as the game goes yeah. on and if the bones for this game mode are good then that's very exciting like if, yeah. if it looks good, it looks like it, it somehow all works, still feels like a like a Halo sort of shooter. And, you know, we know the shooting feels incredible already and the sandbox feels fantastic. So when that, if that all works together, then I think, yeah, like you said, that starts to become very, very exciting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it just, I, I, I could even just picture like really funny moments of just like wiping a squad, like they, they like, rocking up or doing drive-bys in like a warthog and like i just like grapple the the driver inside the warthog and then just drive the rest of their squad off the cliff or something right something. yeah and i could just wipe yeah. the squad like that yeah that'd be really fucking funny yeah and again like casual, right? really fun. yeah 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 that's, that's right awesome. so we'll have to, yeah we'll have to see how it plays out i think that there is a lot of potential there um and, you know, personally, I'm hoping it is kind of the latter, simply because I think it would be more interesting to to our friends for it to be a spin on like a casual BR that I can sweat on if I want to, or I can just chill out if I want to, you know, and then I can bounce between game modes if I want to do that. Like, you know, Infinite's clearly going to be, well, it's not right now, but it will become this massive package. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm more likely to bring friends in, like to get people on, if it's its own thing rather than just like here's halo Fortnite in first person <laughs> yeah yeah for sure <laughs> yeah I, I i would like the latter as well over a more traditional br style halo for sure yeah yeah a couple of unique twists here and there i think is what it needs but clearly you know they've been working on this a long time and and so affinity have like a you know a really good track record as we say with with halo games so and dlcs they've been even back in bungie days 
they you know the, 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 this team doing these people made a lot of the DLCs and the maps and stuff so they're they're quite intimate with it so um mm. I'm excited to hear more uh, like I said earlier I think um we're gonna have a big halo blowout this uh summer June supposedly um where we'll hear more about maybe forge uh, maybe co-op because that's still supposed to be coming in season two but they said it's not coming on launch day so we'll probably hear about that um might come sooner yeah and maybe this mode so we'll have to and uh, maybe story elements as well like we said earlier um, yeah. so i suppose the final thing for this halo story then is um that uh it seems that there are going to be some story elements and coming with season two what that exactly means yet yeah, isn't entirely clear um and it'll be chapters for a multiplayer story and there's been this idea that 343 have wanted to have like a multiplayer like story type thing uh, where you take your own spot and then you i I was thinking like similar into like the sort of i guess the way they do it in like pieces and like apex like little yeah i think so like here and there that you piece together yeah i think like spartan ops yeah yeah oh yeah yeah like that yeah yeah, exactly. And you get like a, maybe a chapter or two each season. And you, you know, you mm-hmm. take your Spartan in and maybe at the end of it, you get a piece of cool armor you can take away. Um, and it progresses this story. And like, if it starts with kind of, you know, like this lone wolves and headhunters and stuff, I'll be very, very interested. But, you know, they take this with a grain of salt, but it, it seems that there are some strings related to chapters and scores uh, as part of the multiplayer. Um, you know, maybe you can get different pieces of equipment based on what score you get in that chapter. You know, things like that. Hmm. Um, as I said earlier, so much stuff is coming to this game. It's just not, not there yet. Yeah, um, exactly. And it all sounds really good. Like this, I, I would totally play this. You know, if it's like 15 minute mission, try and get a high score, get this dank, you know, like helmet, armor effect, uh, emblem, whatever. That, that sounds pretty cool to me. And it like progresses this like side story in the Halo universe that's maybe not about Chief, you know, and that's that sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on from this then. Um, that was good. I've been I've been itching to talk about that all week. Um, so in our final two stories for today, nice and short, QuakeCon is taking place in August. Um, and we have spoken about the idea of like Bethesda and uh, Xbox doing their own thing this year in terms of like a showcase, which I'm like, you know, I'm back and forth on because I liked them being together for the brand recognition last year. Mm. But if they've got a lot to show and they want to do like proper showcases, then I guess I'm okay with them doing their own thing. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, what do you think? I think it's needed for, for, uh, for them to do their own thing, personally. Um, for proper in-depth showcases, um, for, for you know so many of these big titles coming out, um, I think it's important to do that, and it's is, and it's not like there won't be Xbox and uh, plastered all over it anyway, right? Even yeah. even yeah. if it's their own show, so I'm I'm more than happy for them just to have their their own thing. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to yeah. drill it into and people's I- brains anymore that we have with that stuff. I mean, actually, to be fair, we probably do, but yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that's the thing, isn't it? it? It just maybe you know maybe Xbox has Microsoft have more available data on this of like you know how you know when these terms are searched together online, like do people are typically like aware of the fact that they're together? Like, you know, like what are the kind of stats on that and everything, um, mm-hmm. and you know maybe they think that actually people tend to be aware of the fact, so like especially with the advertising campaign for Starfield very, very slowly ramping up. People are seeing that and being like, oh, I can't wait to play this on my PlayStation. For... Oh, no. Yeah. You know, and then realizing that, you know, Bethesda is now owned, etc. So, and this this is meant to be like a big E3 year. We you know we said this way when we started doing the show 50 episodes ago. Uh, and 2021 was a good year, a good E3 showing as well. It was really good. But when you... The, the thing that everybody has been saying about Xbox for, for the last four years is that 2023 and onwards is supposed to be when the wheels are really turning and it's kind of like quite crazy. Um, yeah. That means there's got to be a good amount of stuff ready to show for this year. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe COVID has slowed that down, but maybe that's also contributing to why this is happening. 
even having, you know, because something like we spoke about the idea of like a possible quake being made, right? Or a quake that would be a big deal. Yeah. So taking that out of the Xbox show and saving it for QuakeCon um, would suggest to me that they have some good content to fill the Xbox show. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's that's the that's the take. Um, mm-hmm. But it is digital only, by the way, as well. Just so everybody knows, they usually do it in person. But yeah. Not these days. Everything's digital only. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. And the final news story for this week is that um, Microsoft is supposedly building a sort of platform or like investigating technologies that allows them to put advertisements in free-to-play games. Now, I will say... That this isn't the first time we've seen this sort of story. I remember Sony, there's a story about Sony looking into the exact same thing in 2012. Obviously, nothing's come of it. Um, and it also depends what we mean when we're talking about ads. Hmm. You know? Yeah. What are we talking about here? <laughs> and also, is it justified in free to play games? I guess those are the two questions. Yeah, I mean, are, are we talking ads solely to promote the the currency within that free to play game specifically, or to promote games yeah, like in Games Pass, or you know, just general sales and I think it would be external games. as well. You think yeah, it would, I think just it would be, be external all external well. advertising? I think that's the idea. You know, yeah, it it. Could, yeah, I, I I don't really know how how I feel about that to be honest. Um, because I guess I don't mind as long as it doesn't take me out of the experience too much. Because right, yeah, right. I think it'd be really annoying to to have and to, to to just have that sort of pop up while you're playing. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I'm just trying to picture it. It's kind of, it's it, kind of weird. It's one of those things about. that. It's one of those things that, as a consumer, it's it's only bad, isn't it? That, that's the yeah, problem. Um, exactly. In terms of hearing this this news, uh, I mean, so I don't, it's not like an official announcement that someone's obviously uh, found some information that indicates that this is the case. Um, it sounds only bad as a consumer, um, and like you said, it, it very much does hinge on execution. Because I saw some people like you know going off the rails on Twitter, like you know, oh, it's um, oh, you know, my Xbox are going to interrupt my game to show me a, a two minute ad. It's like. No. It's not going to happen, is it? it <laughs> like in the middle like of playing like Cyberpunk or you know like a uh, Halo uh, campaign, and it just it's just like ad starting in five, four, three. It's like that's not going to happen, is it? Yeah. Um, so you know it very much hinges on execution. Like we're we talking like product placement. You know, I remember back in the day of like Quantum Break, there was a lot of like they had like Microsoft Surfaces like being advertised in game. Yeah. Um, yep. Is it that? Like what we're we talking about? Um, that's true. That is true. Yeah, you could just do it through through product placement. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And uh, Death Stranding was infamous for like they were like obsessed with monster in that game. I don't know if you've seen that. They have like loads uh, of monster energy drinks in that game. I have like, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I have seen. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know why, but so this isn't know. like that's. Yeah, that sort of like advertising isn't, you know, unheard of. Um, and these things haven't gone anywhere in the past, you know, before. Um, but, you know, if you look at other markets, free to play stuff tends to be rammed with adverts. Yeah. You know, you could say, well, that's different because you're playing for Xbox Live Gold and, you know, you're already, you know, you're paying for stuff. So maybe you shouldn't. That shouldn't be the case. But then there are some people, you know, you now don't need Xbox Live Gold to play free to play. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, you know, you download a free to play game on your mobile phone and you actually are interrupted every level to watch an advert. Yeah. You know? So that's, I think, I guess where it starts to get tricky. Like maybe it's like, is it a pick your poison sort of deal of monetization? We yeah. either ram this with transactions or we. Ram it with loot boxes, or we put ads in it. You know, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I, again, all, all arguments are based on how tastefully it's done, whether it's loot boxes, ads, or the other thing you said. 
Um, I, I can't remember if yeah. you said three things. Because I don't have an issue with loot boxes or cosmetic items being in the game as it's something to chase. It's something that's, uh, I don't know, fun. You know, it, it, and, and it adds to the overall game experience where something like uh, an ad pop up that I have to like click off or just, yeah, just being shown an ad while I'm while I'm playing or for whatever reason. I don't think it will be as obstructive, at least the way I'm thinking it as ob- obstructive as like a mobile advertising or yeah. um or like a YouTube advert coming up or anything like that. I don't think it will quite be to that level. Um. But you know, I, I I prefer the sort of systems we have now and loot boxes and all that sort of stuff over over the ads personally. If if they yeah, that's the thing. But then that that requires dev work and in house work. You know, they've got to make the skins, they've got to do the loot boxes. You know, that does require development work to get money back. Whereas just saying like, hey, you can advertise our product here, that doesn't require any manpower from the developer standpoint to actually get that done when they're still getting money in through that through that advertisement. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think, and that's the thing. I think there is a more nuanced conversation to be had here that, you know, that isn't ads are bad, you know. Um, you know, I think if you had, because a lot of people out there, you know, really, really hate monetization that isn't like traditional, that isn't just, you know, you're up front, 70 pound game and even that's like getting a bit shaky because 70 pound is like ridiculous or 65 or whatever 70 dollars um mm-hmm. and I, to those people you know if you're one of those people one of, one of our listeners one of our dear listeners i guess my question to you is um would you like if you had the option like you know we've got to be realistic you know they're looking to monetize and we can't change that would you choose to keep micro microtransactions in the game or would you like that to all be available as part of the base game, but there are product placements all over the game? Uh, like in-game, on billboards, you know. Um, and, you know, like Tim was saying, that, that that degree of intrusivity is up for debate. But is there a level of intrusivity that you would settle on to have no microtransactions and all the unlockables are just in the game and it's all learnable, et cetera, et cetera. Cause that's, that, that tends to be like the, you know, the, the Valhalla that people like tend to, to go for, you know, yeah. um, or, or if product placement isn't possible, you know, would you like, like a boxed advert on the menu of the game, you know, just like down in the window mm-hmm. where there's like usually scrolling UI updates or would that be again too much? So like these are considerations, you know, I don't think, and none of them are good for us because it's additional monetization, but yeah, you, I think sometimes you have to be realistic in weighing up what would you be preferred if they're looking to make money, um, <laughs> you know, and unless you want to kind of revolt and say stop making money, which, you know, you're, you're obviously welcome to do, but I just don't think you'll move the needle. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a question of like settling, right? Um, I think I think that's what it comes down to. You're never going to have your yeah, ideal compromise. scenario. Yeah, there's always going to be compromise. Yeah, you know it goes both ways. They have to make money. <laughs> you know, it's whether you like it or not. Um, so yeah, no, I agree. It's uh, it's a tough. So, so it's, that's it's a tough call. It's a tough call. Definitely. So that, that's that's the thing I'd like encourage everyone to think about. Like, what degree of intrusivity would you would you be okay with? Um, as a trade-off for removing other things from other monetization models that you don't like. Um, and I know some of you are probably sitting there going, oh, well, you know, Elden Ring just came out and it didn't have any monetization. Well, okay, you're like, yeah, it's not a service game though, is it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and so some companies aim for wider profit margins than others. And I guess, yeah, you could criticize the profit margins that they're going for, but hey, look, <laughs> It's so unfortunately the way that it is. <laughs> it's another discussion. Uh, but yeah, so th- that, that's kind of the question. Um, but honestly, hopefully it doesn't go anywhere unless there is any, like like you said, like tasteful solution that actually does have a, a tangible benefit for me. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, hopefully that's what, you know, because ultimately, but that's the thing. I just can't see them. Sorry, I'm dragging this out longer than I should, but I, I can't see them ro- uh, bringing in any more money from advertising than they could do through microtransactions. You know, I don't feel like that's possible. <laughs> no, probably not. But then, you know, microtransactions, like I said, do require dev power as well. You know, it, it requires work. 
So there is the trade off. Yeah, that is on true. That too. You know, if the work hours go into creating these things to then be sold, and that all factors into the overall revenue and how much they're making. Um, well, you'd have thought they'd still be argue, made. It's just they would be. I was going to say, you could argue the fact that, you know, that development time could be spent just building the core game rather than having a team dedicated to building cosmetics and microtransactions and all that. Everyone could just build a core game and then you just chuck ads into it. You might get a better mm. overall game, but it just adds ads everywhere. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, it, it might be one of those things that it's like, if you subscribe to Games Pass or Xbox Live Gold, you get no ads. But if you don't, then you'll have to put up with some ads here and there. Yeah. Yeah, I could potentially see so. that. Yeah, like I said, hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. Um, but if it does, yeah, hopefully there is a, you know, it's thought through that there is a tangible benefit because this could be one of those things that's like, you know, you destroy the last decade of goodwill if you just start slapping adverts uh, in games, um, yeah. like, non, like not well and not very tangible way. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Mm-hmm. That's it, everyone. Um, if you've stuck around, uh, thank you so much. We are this is our fiftieth episode, so four more episodes, and we'll be. Uh, well, I've been doing this for a year. Um, podcasting is hard. <laughs> we, you know, there's almost always technical difficulties, um, and it's been fun. I think getting at least twenty of you out there to start, you know, sort of listen to us in terms of uh, subscribers. So you know, yeah, thanks for that. And. If you've got anything to add, anything to say, pop it down in the comments. Follow us on Twitter. Give the video a like if you wouldn't mind. Hey, subscribe. We'll put our <laughs> videos every Sunday on Monday. Sometimes. <laughs> uh, but other than that, Tim, anything to anything to add before we wrap up for today? Uh, no, that's everything. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy, Happy Easter. Easter. Happy Have Easter. lots of chocolate if you're into that. Yeah. Um, and we'll catch you next week um, for more jibber-jabber. Jibber-jabber. Yeah. Bye. Bye.